Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Los Angeles 2119. I'm Eric, and this is Callisto6. Hi, everybody. Hey. How's y'all doing? We were literally just gabbing on about how much we love the new Doctor Who. No <laughs> right spoilers. Before we went What's that? No spoilers. No spoilers. Where, for people that don't know, where can they watch it? Because I want to support the BBC for finally hiring a woman to work on that show. BBC where America? I, so do I need cable? I feel like there's an app, because I feel like yes. I watched it using an app that went to my TV. I, I bought it on Xbox. Mm, I just bought the season on it. Buy, you can buy the whole season mm -hmm. and you get. And they'll, they'll really, it's the mm, late release, but they will sure. release. And then okay. you also get some of the extras, which is what I really wanted because I wanted mm. to see Jody talk about getting hired as the. Oh, director. it's the best. Use She's promo code SPACE. <laughs> no, that, that no that's, no. that's, for that's different. Yeah. Alpha, Sorry. And use promo code BARDS for your. Yeah! yeah. For <laughs> <Kevin>. Alpha. <laughs> um, okay, so welcome back, everybody. Uh, we, of course, have Hector back. Yay! Woo! And we had to sacrifice Eliza on the altar of the gods in order to get Hector back. So next week we'll sacrifice Hector and just leapfrog this. Her blood will strengthen us all. Yeah. I have to strike my mega bands <laughs> together and then we'll swap places. So, uh, yeah. Amy got it. As long one as person. Amy gets my jokes. Earlier I wasted one of those on Gina yeah. four seconds Super ago. Super wasted. Um, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it was a long one too. It was. It like, took a journey. I was just sitting there going, okay, okay. Holy um, shit, Xander's here. Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God. I just and I like that. that I'm not on he the sacrificial table. Whoa. <laughs> Lisa, you look so different. That's so method. <laughs> that is so method. I've been here the whole time. Dedicated. Hey, he has. So we, He's are gonna, no okay. we, we are going to hit some of the nostalgia kicks because we've got episodes of Sam Loses Their Shit. Oh. Oh. Which is which is Which is appropriate because it was Sam's birthday last week. So yes. we got, actually, I need a cutting utensil of some kind, an apparatus that is capable of, oh. There's a, just a, a knife. Thank you, yes, someone just on hand. That's with how a, you know they're well, the crew members. Crew that's, yeah, that's like, our crew. Our crew's amazing. Let me pop this. I'm gonna give like, you the heavy one first. Do you need a sharp metal object? Oh, okay. The big, the big, the big heavy I don't one. know what's happening. I'm off camera, and I I'm like such it, a professional but bastard. I'm nervous. All right, let me take this over. All right. Mm. That looks like that's from that a big corporation. Wait. <laughs> Oh gosh! You aren't kidding. Somebody bought you, sweet baby. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, comes. Oh, okay. What you got? Uh, what you the, got? The note says, "Hi Sam, this is your birthday present. I'm sorry it's so late. I hope you had the best birthday pre ever. One, I absolutely did. I spent it doing my favorite thing with my favorite nerds. And two, <laughs> lengthening my birthday celebration time period is nothing to ever apologize for. Ever, ever, ever." <laughs> There's a box! It's just what I always wanted! <laughs> you are a cat. That is amazing <laughs> that people can predict. <gasps> there's books! Oh, there's oh, books! Oh, there's good, good hard books! Rolling I don't know if we can show some oh. of that. <laughs> Anatomy! There's yeah. butts! How to draw penises. It's saying. There's butts and boobies. Butt books. <laughs> butt books. Thank you for the butt books. <laughs> Yay! But, hashtag butt books. <laughs> <laughs> Let I'm new Callisto 6 viewers see that hashtag on Twitter. <laughs> I'm like, wait a I minute. Gotta, I, I gotta watch this show. I missed an episode. <laughs> I have to figure out <laughs> what the hell there is Kylan Cross doing. On this, but thank you so much because I have been banging my head into figure drawing recently. So this was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, also, as a part of that, because in conjunction, the entire cast has agreed to be your nude model for mm -hmm. your next. Um, yep. Did we not agree on that? <laughs> oh, did we not? Did we take. <laughs> Oh, yep. sorry. No, never mind. Sorry. Get um, ready for Bond uh, Butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bon butt. Hashtag Bond Butt. Oh, um, the new. <laughs> I shake all the Bon Bonds. This is, this is the Flesh World RPG that we were talking about. I don't, <laughs> I don't think it's coming soon. Coming soon. Coming soon. Did you? you know Lisa Sam. was the glow keeping us safe? <laughs> yeah. Because <Yeah. laughs> I learned. <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome back, Hector. Yeah. Um, okay. Here's a, uh, uh, but we got more. Here's another one. But wait, there's more? But wait, there's more. Mm. Oh, dear. Um, there's bubble wrap. Now, I believe that one is. Yeah. I will use this responsibly. Now, by believe, which I mean irresponsibly. Now, I'm giving you that one. That one is actually addressed to the cast of Shield of Tomorrow. Oh. oh so oh. pop R. that R. open. <laughs> yeah. R.I.P., they're dead. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. They're, <not> ridiculous. <laughs> they're not born yet. <laughs> Only one of them is dead and we Are those assume. pencils? No, oh, I was like, did somebody buy you more pencils? Of course. What is it? What did you get? Oh, get? oh hey, hey. Hey, you. <gasps> Ooh, magic yeah. cards. Oh. Is this for me? Oh, y'all are mean, going. I mean, who else could it possibly be? Y'all are going down. There's also a red me. Uh, oh, which, as we, oh. It's falling. I'm oh. sorry, I'm very excited. Which ones did you get? So, I've, okay, it's magic. 
the Gathering. Yeah. I've been oh. playing and oh. I love it. Which one did and you I get? have been building a squirrel goblin deck for oh, my Did you get wire. squirrels and goblins? I got a bunch of squirrel tokens. Yeah, a hollow foil. Y'all know how to shop They're for Dina. I didn't know you played magic. I have the Earl of Squirrel. I didn't know squirrels were in Magic the Gathering. <laughs> they are. Green. They are. Okay. One of my favorite old cards, Rabid Wombat, hilarious card. <laughs> hilarious. There's a short message and a longer version. I love the way that you guys note what's safe for us to read on Thank air you. and like yes. give us things that are bite-sized so that we can share this with all of you. Yeah. Uh, Shield of Tomorrow slash Callista Six Cast. Thank you so much for hanging out with us at Gen Con. Everyone oh. was so Aww. kind and genuine joys to talk to. Enclosed are the promised Magic the Gathering cards for Eric and Gina. Oh Same my gosh! Gen Con 2019. Signed, Lily and Olivia. Didn't we play them? Oh, we yes, played them. Did. We played them. Yeah. That's right. We're pulling up on y'all. It was delightful. That's right. Yeah. That's funny. Thank you so much. Incredible, Lily. That was a lot of fun. Uh, I played her with my vampire. goblin. Yeah. All right, Sam. I'm just gonna dump the rest of you uh, uh, of this on you. So here uh, we go. Okay. <laughs> this, this is all just. This I is had to open it all up. Hi, Tessa. Thank you. Oh, look, they got me a Johnny. That's what this was. <laughs> I went around. Yeah. I went around asking for the a Johnny deck. No, wait. Deck. I think oh, one of these damn. is yours. One of those is mine. Because they said for both no, of you, <laughs> right? For both of me. I appreciate this box because they no, broke my yours. feelings. They just meant. Yeah. Got before it. I even opened it. What? Mm. Hell, what? This is Sam to love. Oh, no. oh, oh Nick's awesome! Thank you. I got a Johnny. I'm so happy. Oh Johnny's my favorite planeswalker. <laughs> next to Sor next to Soren. Read but first. Johnny is awesome. Sam loses their shit. Don't don't apologize for this handwriting, letter writer. It is excellent. Glad you keep saying that because it's Johnny is like an English term for just a condom. <laughs> like a rubber Johnny. A Johnny. Oh, a Johnny. Yeah. But you keep saying like I got a Johnny. This is a lovely letter uh, from Kai, whom Aww. we know. Yeah. He's also giving me updates um, on on all sorts of good stuff, um, and so I will read this extensively over break. Uh, and and and. Mm. <laughs> And it's really lovely. It's a very nice letter. Thank you, guys. And inside, like oh my goodness, there's so much wrapping that I will have to <laughs> get my friends who have fine motor control to As, do things with. Okay, sure, yeah. Let's go there. Here, here, here. Yeah. Go, go, go. Hand them out. Oh no, this is bad. But these are necessarily packed. <laughs> nah, in nah. I got nails. Spray. I'm sure they'll oh, understand because we, we oh, do have an episode yeah. lighting tonight, them. so I'm sure everyone will understand if we have to. But it looks like we're actually tearing through these pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, look at that. <laughs> Yeah. We're fine quickly. I'm trying to be careful. <laughs> I don't know what's in here. It's wrapped in a circle. It is a gen. They're genuinely fragile objects. Oh, okay. Yeah. So like this. Okay. This is. Sensitive. Oh no. We haven't done a fan mail thing in a long time. By the way, there is more. Um, we're just kind of spacing out how much we open per episode so oh, we can jump into the game. That's but. terrifying oh. in just the best way. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if you send some stuff show. our way. Oh, did you guys get seashells? For this, for the oh, this and it's painted. I love seashells. Oh, I see. They're the different Look. flags. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow, those are gorgeous. Because that's the uh, trans flag, mm -hmm. and I think bisexual. No. Uh, do Oh, they're LGBT. They're LGBT you flags. Plus. Cool. And inside I think this is the, the ace flag. Yellow, is, white, purple, black. That's nice. These are beautifully done, guys. I'm they not sure. It's insane. Insane. Thank you so much. OK. Um, you got some decorations to do. There's there's also a letter and present from uh, Heathcliff. Uh, the OK to read that says, it's dangerous to go alone. Take this pencil and potion of non-binary pride. Thank you for being awesome and making my day every week. Your friend in potion. London, Heathcliff. Yay. The potion of non-binary pride. I love that. I, I love that. And this pencil. Oh, it's adorable. It has a face. Anyway, it's not only a pencil you can't break, it's a pencil you wouldn't want to. Oh! Oh, oh, the potion. The potion. <laughs> so that was the non-binary flag. Oh my god. Right? Yeah, that's the pro strat. Y'all have tried to send me pencils that I can't break, and you know what I did? I broke them. <laughs> the pro strat is sending pencils I don't want to break. The adorable yeah. pencils yeah. Oh that are Chris, immune to Sam. Does it have a little face? Oh no, this it has a little yeah. face. Oh, oh that's cute. This is like, I, uh, what else you got? I miss this. <laughs> I miss Sam loses this shit. I know. <laughs> we haven't had an episode in a while. We've just been shuffling along. That potion is amazing! <laughs> oh my god. No. Dumped my trash on you. you oh do? wow. Oh, oh, oh my oh. god. Oh. Okay, I haven't opened this letter yet, but I'm being see. severely targeted. Is and I appreciate <laughs> you. Stickers? What is that? This is the first time I've been this close to Is it targeting the that are What is it? Uh, this is from uh, Perfect Kasima. Sam, I saw this pin, which is a rainbow bat um, <laughs> with with a constellation. So rainbow space targeted. bat. Oh targeted. Targeted. <laughs> uh, at Fan Expo Boston, immediately thought of you and Merza. Hope you like it. 
Also, the girl who made the art was super nice and donates part of her profits to help save bats. Oh. And so there's a hollow sticker of a bat. It heals bats? And a sticker sticker of a bat. A rainbow and a space pin bat? of a bat. And, and, and. <laughs> and he's all bringing me sweet relief. Oh. Like, ah. Rainbow space bat is like. <laughs> yeah, it really, it's really just it me. And, and finally, we have um, from Lynette. Uh, hi, Sam. Happy hi. birthday. And, and, uh, mm, mm, it's dice! Yay! Yeah. Yes, you, yes, you. They're dice, uh, they're metal dice in, uh, in lacy colors. Yeah! Oh. So, I'm rolling these tonight. metal lacy dice? So, we're, yeah. we're gonna find out how that, how that, that works. Like this that is, is, this is perfect. Blue. Thank you that. so much. Um, yeah. I, I regret to inform you that I will be starting this episode with a complete deficit of shit. It appears <laughs> I have lost it. <laughs> I Thank believe you Sam is emotionally compromised. So much. <laughs> um, um, before we move on to the credits for quick announcements really quick, Xander and I have a concert tomorrow with the yes. Double Cliff, and we are live streaming it, so watch it. <gasps> you can, watch it. Anyone yeah. can watch it. Kulak's Here. Woodshed, correct? Kulak's yeah. Woodshed. At 8 o'clock. 8 p.m. Los Angeles time. Yeah, we're the opening act, I believe. Yep. And I don't know what we are. And we're going to be live streaming the whole thing, so right tune on. in. It's, it's going to cool. be fun. Check out our Twitter. Sorry. All right. That was really fast. We don't really have any other announcements than that, guys. I think it's time to jump into tonight's episode of Callisto 6. I'm Sorry. <laughs> we went live while Sam and I were still threatening each other. <laughs> uh, welcome back, everybody. Um, a hell of an episode to unpack from the last game that we played here. You guys had a big moment. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> Leave you alone for five minutes. I know. Thanks and you much. go public. <laughs> You're the PR guy, just so you know. Yeah. We've already determined this. Yeah. Um, so... Um, <laughs> So a quick backstory before I jump into it, I will say that Hector did give me permission to make decisions for Anton during the last game and specifically said, if the party's going to do this, I'll go along with it. Mm -hmm. So... Peer uh, pressure! So, <laughs> yes. So, um, so yes, you are now the team mascot. And mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so Anton now has a giraffe's head, which is kind of weird. But we, we love you, Jeffrey. We miss you. I mean, it's really <laughs> well, it's it's just his long. neck really long yeah. and then I've painted it. And, uh, you know. So in the, in the last episode... <laughs> <laughs> We're a bit punchy tonight, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's um, no, right, right. Sorry. Um, so in the last episode, uh, last game session we played, the group had really decided, uh, running up against the deadline here that had been posed by the infamous Kylan Krauss, the CEO of Pyramid Star <laughs> Solutions. Um, however, at least that's who you thought you were making deals with, um, revelations <laughs> took place in the last episode. Um, as it turns out, there was a third player involved in everything that was happening that hadn't revealed themselves yet, that was trying to reach out to you guys. The employer that you were going to meet up with, turns out did have some answers for you guys. And as you were trying to decide what you were going to do is the group was starting to split and, and, and fracture for the very first time since you all kind of got thrown into this craziness to the beginning. In the beginning, you've all finally had some direction or a hope that there might be a way out. And as it turns out, there was. You met with a gentleman who explained to you that there was somebody else who had been affected by the Callisto 6 energy source that was in that alley with you guys and that had been struck with the Callisto 6 energy source. However, 
for reasons that would be revealed later, that the energy source was weakened when it struck him. It had not coursed directly from the power source. It was not as close as you guys were to the power source. And as a result, his manifestation came a little differently than the rest of you. Um, he was phasing in and out of reality and had been constantly trying to get in touch with everybody, but couldn't. He had basically been following the group around this whole time like a ghost, phasing in and out and being unable to connect with anybody. Creepy. This is not <laughs> creepy, it's fine. So the employer gave you a location of a device that you could use to bring him back in, and lo and behold, it just so happens to have been kept in the Cassium underwater base that was used for research after Sea Day. This base supposedly was set up to study seismic anomalies what of course it ended up being was a front for undersea Cassium genetic experiments that no one could keep tabs on, as you all found out when you arrived. Um, shit went down, but not before you did manage to recover the device that brought our friend Zach, also known as Cobalt, um, back into existence. An encounter with some of the genetic experiments gave you guys a snapshot of what Cassium was up to, and you encountered a new friend? Someone who almost laid the beat down on the party, but uh, managed to kind of get halted and confused and then placated. Um, calls itself Sal, or is referred to as Sal, is basically a big hulking... Friend. It's a Frankenstein's monster. It looks like a, a, a being that has been patched together and brought back to life. Um, monster. You seem to have placated Sal as he wandered back into the base, and upon returning with... Cobalt to the employer, you met, the big revelation came, you met the employer in Beverly Hills at his mansion where he dropped a bomb on you guys. After earning his trust, he revealed to all of you that he, in fact, was Kylan Krause. And that yeah. the man that you had all met was, in fact, Fletcher Krause, his father who has been leapfrogging in biological bodies like hosts to prolong his life as he was securing power. Not only that, you learned that Kyland, the one you're speaking to now, this older gentleman, was in fact a clone and was the one clone to develop a sense of self-awareness and got away from Kylan. Um, Ky or got away from Fletcher, I should say. Fletcher, apparently, there's an illusion that Fletcher may have developed something of a relationship with this particular clone. Kylan has theories that maybe his father actually became somewhat attached to him in some sort of twisted way, that maybe it was love, he doesn't know, but he did last longer than the other clones before Kylan tried, or before Fletcher tried to leapfrog into the new clone's body. But he faked his death using one of the other clones which is kind of a, a, a red stain on his record, and managed to flee. He's been hiding with Zack's family for the better part of his life, and has become a godfather to Zack since then. Mm. And he has accumulated over time an enormous amount of resources, thanks to Zack's parents, and also because Turns out, just like Fletcher, he's a bit of a genius. If you're going to insert yourself into a new body, a clone of yourself, you're going to have, theoretically, well, in the comic book world, you're going to be a duplicate and have the brain capacity of your... <laughs> so, laying all of this down, Kylan offered you resources, whatever you need, if you would help him fight against Fletcher Cross. That's when the last revelation came. The scariest revelation was that there were no multiple players in this game. It's all Fletcher. Kylan revealed to all of you that Fletcher Krauss owns Pyramid Star Solutions and Cassium and Traeger and Nystral. He is the shadowy figurehead at all of the corporations. He also confirmed that his father, Fletcher, was indeed responsible for extracting the Callisto-6 power source and was likely the cause... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we forgot that part. <laughs> and was likely the cause of Sea Day, the day that destroyed Los Angeles. Sorry, Anton. <laughs> Let me pick up that detail we forgot to So... <laughs> a long way you can this is what happens when you don't watch the episode, when you don't get a chance to watch the episodes because you're running around Europe. So, yeah. So, yeah. so Fletcher, just to clarify, Fletcher Krause, Fletcher, is the name of the original 
guy who started the who companies for decades, centuries, or for, or however long, has been cloning himself, but has been like pretending that each of these clones are descendants of his. In public, he's think of con- generation. Yeah. yeah, so in public, it's like, oh, this is my son Kylan, but really, he's planning to put his own brain into his son's mm-hmm. body so that he can keep living and keep it, controlling mm-hmm. these. Companies. Really yes. twisted version of Connor McCloud, constantly taking the names of children who died at birth and assuming their identities, except in this case, Fletcher was literally creating the children. Correct, correct. And but this older uploading. gentleman, this older gentleman that we met, Kylan, Kylan. was able to was escape that fate yeah. and grow old, and we trust him. <laughs> well, he you trust him largely because it's one of those things yeah, where yeah, you yeah, had yeah, to be there. Yeah, we okay. don't really have a choice. Everyone's okay. a friend eventually. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Make everyone our If friend. you adopt Fletcher Krauss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, that's where I draw. I call it like yeah, one right like there. That. So to to answer that question, because there was a lot of distrust when the mm. when he was met, um, Kylan declared and in fact was able to, if you remember correctly, Oya demanded proof. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Immediately. And Kylan, and this will be in the in-between from the last game, because Kylan did tell you he has it. Yeah. He has the data to prove everything. He had hired Kochi to break into Cassium and steal that information because he was trying to find out how to where the device was to rescue Cobalt. Mm. Um, he's also the godfather of somebody who has been infe- who's been infected with the Callisto 6 energy source. So everything so far checks out. Mm. I'll leave it to you guys whether you trust him or not. But he has told you, straight up, that even if you decide not to take his offer and not trust him, he still wants to help you, so let him know what he can do. Mm -hmm. If you decide to walk, he'll understand. But consider him a resource, and he's going to be doing everything he can to take Fletcher down. That was the other thing. He said he'd protect us either way. If we protect that was the other thing. He said either way, you he basically said that y'all were the game changers and that your families are not, he's not gonna stand for that. It's good to know that use of game metaphors is also apparently genetically heritable. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> I understood it. <laughs> yeah. That's how you've been raised. <laughs> so Teacher it's been, it's, gonna, exactly, yeah. it's been, it's been a, it's been an interesting. <laughs> so the game has changed. <laughs> oh, no, you're one of them. And they're. <laughs> don't say pawn, don't say pawn, no. Don't say pawn. Well, no. All but right. The players they are the same. <laughs> We're more like the nooks. So we're starting well, today's. I just want the rules. So the story what? today. I, it was a, there, it was a they're, bad joke. they're in chess. The rooks. I thought you said nooks. I was like, yeah. we're e readers? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're I'm following. We're, I'm a Kindle. Okay. You are. I am the knight. Sponsors, Amazon. Um, <laughs> so today's episode, this issue, we're going to start actually in Blue Dolphin Base. You guys have managed, it's been two days since you delivered your message to Fletcher Krauss and let him know where you stood. And it has been eerily quiet. Um, Raph City is quiet. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Um, there is word spreading on the net right now that another protest is planned in favor of Measure Z, which means people against Measure Z are probably also gonna come out in force. Um, right now in the polls, Measure Z is not looking good. Um, it's difficult when you employ a little over 70% of the entirety of the city of Los Angeles, a city of full of, at this time period, nine million people, roughly the size of present day New York. And most, if not all of them, are employed with healthcare and benefits by these four major multinational conglomerates. And folks don't see why you should disrupt any of that. So just to clarify, we want Measure Z to pass? Measure Z, don't want. I'll let you decide. Okay, but, but here's here, and, and this is a good refresher for the audience, yeah. because we actually haven't addressed the Measure Z issue in a while. Yeah. Measure Z has been the monster in the background. It's been kind of looming over the entire campaign so far, and we're getting closer and closer and closer to when it has to be decided. Election day. Yeah. Vote. Vote. Sorry. Measure Z is essentially this. If you vote yes on Measure Z, you are in favor of restoring more power to the local elected officials. Essentially, the local city government will now have jurisdiction and lawful jurisdiction over corporate Los Angeles. Right now, corporate LA is a de facto mini city within Los Angeles that can operate as it sees fit and has jurisdiction only over itself, a huge portion of the center of downtown Los Angeles. 
is uh, its own country, essentially. And the resources of corporate LA have been largely the economic force behind the city in general. Does it actually have sovereign extraterritoriality or is it separately incorporated like Santa Monica is? It's, because those were two different things that I just want to make sure that I know about because I know about it in the world. So to answer that question, Measure Z is what's going to decide that because it's been incredibly ambiguous up until now. Right now, it's been treated as Santa Monica. Right now, it's its own city off to the side, sort of like a, 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 a like Burbank is its own city. Mm -hmm. Except for this particular, it would be like if the it would be like if the people it would be like if the lo the local officials of Burbank controlled L.A. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In this case, it's because the corporate power has such a stranglehold on Los Angeles um, through tech, jobs, healthcare, everything. The mult. I mean, even the megaplexes that house thousands and thousands of people that stretch up towards the sky, condos and apartment buildings, and those megaplexes that you would see in a cyberpunk-styled world are owned by corporate LA. Um, they have their fingers in everything. So Measure Z, the idea of Measure Z is to reinsert the power of the local governments and restore Los Angeles into a model that resembled what it was before C-Day. It also has tax structure implications. That is a huge tax structure implication, because right now, tax haven. yeah, right now the tax haven benefits of corporate LA are are criminal. But no, they're not. That's the thing. <laughs> corporate LA argues we rescued the city, we resuscitated it, we brought the economy. Because losing Los Angeles hurt the economy of California in general, mm -hmm. and it had a rippling effect. Because California is like what the third largest economy in the world, I fifth. think mm -hmm. fifth. And so that that kind of that kind of disruption has a ripple effect globally. Um, felt closer here at home. Essentially, corporate LA has been able to use that power to do whatever the hell it wants. Um, and so, question: so, Yeah, what do you get if you vote no on Measure Z? No on Measure Z has the benefits of not disrupting the any of the healthcare structures. Mm -hmm. It has essentially. It does not restructure how corporate LA operates right now, which means it's very unlikely that if you voted if you voted no on Z, nothing changes. No is status quo. Mm. No is quo. Well, there's there's, <laughs> there's something that the mayor uh, uh, Kate Galpeng has been trying to get across to the citizens for a while now, because just like in our real world, when you bring a law into effect, there are implications, not only just what you were saying yes to, but what you've established as a no. Mm -hmm. So saying no to Z would essentially be giving corporate LA the foothold it needs forever to stand as its own civic entity. Mm. And it will dictate the course and livelihood of Los Angeles, perhaps California and beyond forever. So it'll, be a, it'll be law. Rather than ending a period of the corporate equivalent of martial law, uh, like and saying, okay, we're putting things back to a pre-catastrophe style structure. Republic it democracy. might begin to send the message that, like, no, they'll just keep, like Disney with copyright, they'll just keep renewing this every mm -hmm. five or ten years, and nothing will ever go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. I, I'm mm -hmm. hearing what the mayor is saying is kind of on the line. The mayor is saying that your destiny is not is being dictated by people you did not elect, and mm -hmm. that Los Angeles does not have control of its own destiny at all right now that it's being decided by people whose best interests are money. Who runs the schools? Uh, it depends on where you live, but for the most part, it's, it's Los Angeles. And Los Angeles does get significant funding from corporate LA, which corporate LA has been using to its brutal efficiency during the campaign against Measure Z. Um, if, but but, if, but it's, it's a catch-22 because Los yeah. Angeles has to depend on corporate LA because the bulk of the economy comes from it. Mm -hmm. If I know public relations like I think I do, <laughs> you're going to be seeing a lot of advertisements that are saying no on corporate LA, but the face of those ads will be like older people. Mm -hmm. It'll be like, oh, yeah. if you vote yes on Measure Z, I'm screwed. Because the brutal truth is this. Mm -hmm. If Measure C goes down, it is going to be a painful transitionary period for the city of Los Angeles. Very painful. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be very difficult, that, that period of change is going to be very difficult for the city. If transitions but, were easy, everyone would do them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's, it's a rough choice because it's literally, do we, do we leave this on autopilot and let the plane take us wherever the hell it wants to take us or we, do we decide where we go? Mm -hmm. um, 
Of course, it has added implications now because all of you know who the hell is in control of corporate LA. <laughs> you don't know much about Mayor Kate Galpeng, but you do know that Fletcher Krauss is the devil. He has been at this for some time, and if he, he has been known to be a, a master manipulator and liar, but whatever his intentions are, he clearly was responsible for destroying most of Los Angeles and then inserting himself as the savior of Los Angeles. A tactic we've seen in our own world many, many, many times. Mm. And it works every time. Because all you gotta do is shout louder than the other guy. And Kylan Fletcher was really good at it when you have control of Nystrel. Really good at it. Not to mention he's charismatic and energetic and he's got everyone looking at the moon right now and the moon base. <laughs> and Measure Z right now in the polls is doing pathetically. And we're just months away. I just got an actual pit in my stomach. I know, <laughs> I know. I know. It's like, getting a little getting too real. <laughs> if I, if, in all honesty, when Sam and I built this world, it wasn't our intention for it to actually smell this much like the real world, but <laughs> there you have it. But it turns out we made a cyberpunk genre world. Yes. Huh. <laughs> what do you know? So the point is, um, it's, it's looking bleak for Measure Z right now, but the fight's not over. We're still, there's still time. It's just that the, the rules of the engagement are being dictated right now by the person with the most money, and that is definitely corporate LA. And this is foremost on everyone's mind as y'all have been moving into Blue Dolphin Base. Clearing this place out, emptying those disgusting tanks, clearing up the data, rearranging a lot of the things around here, restocking all the food, and Sal has been helping. Sal has been lumbering around. Doesn't seem, now I'll tell you this about Sal. Sal doesn't seem to be friendly towards one person in particular at all. Sal seems to be more of just like, go here, okay. Oh, okay, I'll put this down. You don't seem like I need to hurt you, okay. Hey, I fixed him. I feel, I feel yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> you lightning bolted him and it fixed him rather well. well yeah, um, I healed him. I tried to um, fight him and instead it did the opposite. Blue Dolphin Base is actually coming along now. And you're now, by the way, oh yes, by the way, uh, Anton, your, your, um, your, your dropship is amphibious and can actually, right. it's a submersible in fact. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks XP. Thanks XP. <laughs> Um, <laughs> there's some comic, comic thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank goodness you two are sitting at I know. <laughs> yeah. so, Jokes that would go on laughed at. <laughs> Blue joke, Dolphin the Base. Joke, uh, the joke I made earlier was Gina explained to me about the flare. You don't gotta, yeah. And I was like, was I was like, oh cool, was it in the shape of a four? And was it done by a, uh, huh. like a... a guy on a, fire? There we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I knew that. I got that reference. <laughs> I went Batman was, with that. I tried not to remember you, the... You were just saying it, and then you didn't even give me time to maybe think of it. You literally were like, I'm making a Fantastic Four joke. Yeah. I, I, we I, had I, that idea, but we torched it immediately. I try my best not to go back Here's to that movie. Thing. If I can just go to Batman, that'd be great. <laughs> oh. It's not a movie, it's a comic book. Here, I solved your problem. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Amy. <laughs> and although it makes no sense, there was that great shot in Batman Returns where Bruce Wayne stands up and it just happens to be shining right through his window. It's like, I would have been worried if I was him. Like, shit. Like, they know. You know? They just know. like Dolphin Base, where we are right now. Yeah. Oh, Smooth. oh right. <laughs> um, the place has been cleaned up pretty well. And also, you, the, the name Blue Dolphin Base, has it has been tossed around if y'all want to keep that name. It's up to you. But this place, with the help of Kylan, has been essentially recharged. There have been new emergency oxygen tanks, which have been uh, brought in like air filters and recy air recyclers. New filters brought in, stuff like that. Equipment is being brought in. Anytime y'all need tools or anything to help you move this along, Kylan is there with the money and is giving it to you. When the question gets asked, okay, well, what do you want in return? He said, save Los Angeles, is all he ever says. Um, it's day two now. And as I said, it's been very quiet, and you guys are, the only sounds right now in Blue Dolphin Base is everyone moving around, and the sounds of hops um, digging through the food pantry, trying to make sure that the coffee does not fall out of the second shelf as it's being piled up on top. It's um, a lot. <laughs> um, Can always use more. Yep, always. But it's been an oddly quiet two days for you guys. It's been like a big sleepover, really, <laughs> as everyone's been kind of, as, as you guys have circled the wagons, really, and have decided to stick together and wait to see what's going on on the top. Oya has been particularly distant and has claimed one of the rooms, 
which within the past two days she has filled with all sorts of very interesting incenses and silks and things that resemble religious paraphernalia that are kind of all over the place. Meditation. Room. Yeah, it definitely looks, when you, when you walk by and you've seen her, it definitely has a spiritual serenity to it when you, when you walk by, but she is a little distant. She's kind of talaning a little bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> who? Um, but yes, no, Oya, Oya is a little distant. She has been keeping to herself. Um, and the rest of you guys have, Get, been getting shop set up, essentially down here. Getting connected, um, getting new antennas put onto the dolphin base. Um, BDB. Yeah, and we start the games to, off tonight as uh, Sal is approaching you, Cobalt, and just walks over to you with one of these huge, it looks like one of these huge tubs filled with heavy equipment that Lacey requested and just sets it down and goes. Sal, we've talked about this. Is this where this belongs? No. Do you know where it belongs? No. I can help you. Okay. Let's pick this back up again. <laughs> Picks it up. Lacey? Yeah? Are you here? Oh, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> where should uh, Sal bring this equipment? Uh, over by the center lab bench in the workshop. Do Thank you. Understand? No. Follow me. <laughs> and I'll take it over there. <laughs> he follows after you. Um, Lazy, as you are, <laughs> a couple of sparks fly off of one of the welding torches. You set it down just as Sal walks in behind Cobalt. Um, I'm guessing Luma's in here as well, I think. Uh-huh, I've set up like a sewing station because I know <laughs> that we're gonna need costumes eventually and I'm just like, okay, and I've just been going to town and there's just like hundreds of unfinished pieces. It's, it's, it's totally, it's, it's cyberpunk minds and crafts. Yeah, you, this, you like walk in the door. Yeah, I'm just like sitting on a table wherever you're working, just like all these sewing, <laughs> damn it, a needle, just. <gasps> all this tech you stuff and then it moves over and it's like camera just pans. You see all this tech equipment and weapons that have been dismantled all lining the wall and like, and then it just moves over to the, like these huge sewing machines and like areas for <laughs> just scissors and just the one laser sewing cutters. Machine. Oh, just the it's one. Just my mother's sewing machine. Don't tell her. Um, <laughs> buy um, you a new one. Oh. So no, Sal Sal walks in, one. just and looks up at Honey, who just looks at him and he just goes, <sighs> and then he sets the thing down, just okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sal. It, okay. He walks out. Um, there's still a lot of data you've pulled off of the mainframe of this that you have not had a chance to go through just yet, too. Um, but what is everyone doing? I'm in the kitchen. I'm trying to make cafecito to leave outside Doria's door. Okay. I have burned a couple of them, but uh, one of them's like, okay. Hot cup. Can I move that? Take a good sniff of it. Doesn't smell quite as... Ashen as the others, <laughs> doesn't have that sort of burned coffee smell. And just okay, move down the hallway. You kind of nod to Sal as he walks by. And Sal has taken to staring at your hair every time he walks by. He just kind of pauses again as he looks at it. <laughs> just kind of eyebrow raise hello, uh, eyebrow raise hello, and he just kind of. Hmm. Hey, buddy. Pretty. Sorry, I missed that scrap. Pretty. Oh. <laughs> Keeps. Does he have hair? No, he's bald. Do you have wigs? <laughs> so many. Oh boy! Oh, Here comes the fan up. art. <laughs> just up time um, to You move over to Oya's door. Um, her door is always open. She's not closed herself off. She's just withdrawn. So, you got something? <laughs> so just more wig. With talk. that beautiful thing, can I make it canon that uh, Cass asked me to sew an outfit for Sal? I don't see why not. It's been two days. Okay. <laughs> oh, come on. Good enough. Two days, that's funny. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Just like a big you set, where you, you get to the door um, and it sh slides open. Um, you see Oya is sitting in the middle of the room. Hey, um, Oya. She, her eyes open. She looks up and she goes, hey. Just refill. Oh, thank you. And she moves over. Um, and she stops for a second, and then it smells a little burned. Well, I am terrible at this. No, no, that's perfect. 
Watch this. And she puts her hands over the cup and you see the water ripple a little bit as she kind of reverses how long the liquid burned and just... Oh my gosh! And then she pulls her hand away very, very carefully, just kind of the glow begins to recede and she goes, okay. She reaches down and sips it and goes, thank you. Guess just makes faces. <laughs> it goes on a face journey. She's like, I know, I may never have to cut my fingernails again. <laughs> <laughs> I need her What are you like doing? You making something? Not really. Um, she sets the mug down and says, I'm not, and please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm not sure I'm ready to talk about it just yet because I'm not exactly sure what I experienced. But everything's okay. It's just something kind of strange happened to me, and, and it has to do with the powers, I think. And I'm just trying to find out what it was and what happened. But if it was a problem, I would say something. I just don't know exactly how to communicate it because I don't know what it was that I saw. Okay. Got a bunch of smarties down I know. There. I know. And I, I don't know why, but I feel like once I understand what it was I saw, I'll understand why it was that I didn't want to say anything yet. Does that make sense? It doesn't have to. Okay. You're a good friend. Thank you. Well, you shout if you need anything. Okay. Thank you for this. Mm. Tell your mom I did that. <laughs> Not that. Just tell her I made it good. I'll tell her you made it good. She'll expect you to make it for her. Don't tell your mom I did that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> The last thing you see is... fix the smell. As you're walking out, the last thing you see is Oya's shoulders kind of arcing up the way someone does when they get into, like, a cozy blanket. The they sense of comfort as she sips gingerly on the, on the drink, and the, sh- the door closes. Um, what's everyone else doing? I, uh, I cleared out one of the rooms. Oh. Oh. Um, I'd like you to start this game with uh, minus one intellect in your pool. She hit her head. What happened? <laughs> Sal. <laughs> um, I uh, I've cleared out one of the rooms and have I put a new order in uh, with my <laughs> not with my dealer. That sounds wrong. But you know what I mean. Uh, I got like I got like wooden staffs along the wall and I've I've put like different kind of like mannequins and like. I basically I'm I'm making a training room mm-hmm. so yeah. so we can all kind of learn how to oh, nice. not not get killed. Thank you. I will oh. say it's it's no danger room, that's for right. sure. But no. you do you do have like yeah. you, Sal's been helping yeah. me. Kylan has yeah. been very has been very helpful as well acquiring mm. equipment that you might need to train with. Right. And it's been very accommodating. It's Just, been a little bulky transforming back and forth between land and here, but you've managed to fill this place out pretty good. I would say the room is about the size of uh, this room. Yeah. We have a really heavy duty one in the corner for Cass that that she can punch. It's one of those cool training I dummies that tells you that tells like, you how many pounds you it's hit. It's like really heavy duty. Right. And then there's like different targets and like a different uh, things for Anton to like different obstacles he can stretch around. And I'm just I'm just making a training room. Okay. So we can have cool montage. You've been keeping yourself busy. Yeah. Um, exactly. You did this in two days. Uh, so uh, to address that, um, everybody else who's been working here, especially those who've been up late, <coughs> lazy. <coughs> um, and who have been working a lot or have been moving around Dolphin Base a lot, you have reached a point where the amount of work that Hops has completed is not only extraordinary for two days, but you're starting to wonder when the last time you saw her not working was. (laughs) And you're pretty sure, Lacey, that at some point around 2.30 in the morning, as you were moving to the kitchen to get some water, you are pretty sure you saw Hops still going at the same speed that she was going that morning. We have a lot to do. I did see her not working, but it was eating, so that doesn't really count for the sleeping part. <laughs> right. Unless it was uh, Ambien. <laughs> it wasn't. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Maybe. But, so yeah. you, we will say that you have accomplished finishing off the bulk of this room, essentially. Oh, yeah. It is us- totally usable. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sal set up and setting up dummies for you. All right, so that's what that's what Hops has been up to. You've been sewing, creating. I'm sewing. Okay. I can be done with the garment. Give it to Sal. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's. What, what's everybody else doing? Anton and uh, Anton has been having a tough few days. I imagine. He, when he went off to go take care of stuff, it ended up feeling like he was putting his affairs in order, as if he knew he was gonna die sort of a thing. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't set out for it to turn into that, but it turned into, I have to make sure my family's okay, my mom and dad is okay, I need to talk to them about what's happening. He decided to tell them everything. Mm -hmm. um, so they're informed, so they know what's going on. He, he like basically, not that he had not that he has money, but he had like that the job and everything in that title. He had stuff in his apartment. He like put that in storage or with his parents or like like really putting your affairs in order, yeah. making sure like okay, like this this pile of stuff that I have, my mom likes it, so it's gonna go to my mom or this I can return or whatever, or just leave this here or so just check checklisting everything in his life. So when he gets back to Blue Dolphin Base, the past day, day and a half, he's been kind of. Um, keeping to himself and and trying to meditate and doing a thing that like Odo does mm -hmm. in Deep mm. Space Nine where he's like just working on shapes. Oh, oh that's we're cool. Uh, we're in a bucket. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> essentially, yeah. Like if yeah, if there's a bucket, he'll try he'll try a bucket. Like you'll you'll find that you'll find that you're actually able to conform body parts to the inside of the bucket, but you yeah. haven't reached that level yet where your body can actually f Liquefy. Yeah. Bucket, yeah, you can't go yeah. full Terminator Two, but you, you can a giant bucket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you you can you can definitely form different types of shapes. One of the things that we can say Anton's been looking at is trying to do the hand hammer thing. Mm. Um, and you have been able to sort of pull that Mister Fantastic enlarged fist trick. Mm -hmm. um, you, you kind of, yeah. Although it's not really packing the wall up necessarily. You don't, do you have an ability that lets you punch really hard yet? Because uh, this no. Because so when you spend XP, if you we have if you, somebody else on the team that does that, <laughs> <laughs> it's true. You can never you never have too many though. Yeah, really, true. yeah. As, uh. as the not fighter person in this team, it doesn't matter how many other people can punch <laughs> when it's your turn. <laughs> just just curious. Not yeah. fighter? Yeah. Hi. I exist. Well, it seems though, but it seems like, it, and, and we can talk about this later. But it seems like Anton is gearing much more towards battlefield control than he is DPS, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> You're more of like. Block him up, hold person kind of thing. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Um, uh, incapacitate, you know, to uh, uh, tank maybe because you're probably gonna be able to take a lot of damage if you need to. Yeah, exactly. Shields, those, those kinds of things. Gl right. Like, gleep and gloop from the Herculoids. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They would, <laughs> you know, they would yeah, yeah. shapes and stuff. They would like, like trampoline their their teammates. You're flubber that's too. If you didn't flubber. Know. That's too. All right. Oh yeah, come yeah, on. Right. <laughs> but because of what everything that Anton did yesterday um, and leading up to this, like he has minimal stuff in this base. He's thinking to himself, I don't know how long this is this is gonna last. I, I don't know how that. long. Like so, what I was the, with you for part of it, and I'll be curious like, yeah. which parts you think I was around for. At a certain point, those guys you were moving were stuff in, in my apartment. Okay. You were you and were moving you heavy stuff in my apartment. Like, I carried yeah. the furniture. I was now. like, <laughs> why do you even need this? I don't know. I don't need it anymore. Let's get rid of it. I'm sorry. Just pivot it down into the <laughs> pivot. <laughs> pivot. Get it out of here. Pivot the, pivot. the other way. <laughs> I I left some dings in that staircase. Um, <laughs> yeah, Cass and I kind of bonded a little bit during that because 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 we had these kinds of conversations of like, it wasn't as morbid as, are we gonna die? Is this a suicide mission? But it was a thing of like, is this base, is this our home? Is this our new home now? I kinda can't believe how many plans you had for like, a year. You just knew what you were gonna be doing. Yeah, for the most part, and then, you know, my entire life was flipped upside down, so that's fine, I guess. <clears throat> I was gonna get a pet. I was probably gonna marry someone, maybe have children at some point. Some of those things can still happen. Yeah, if we do our jobs right, maybe they, that's the point, right? Maybe the, the, the point is so that we can go home at some point. So what I'm saying is all I'm gonna need is really my bed. If you can just lift that for me, it's super heavy. How, where are we gonna put it? I don't know, it's, turn it to the side and we'll try to move it. It's really nice, it's all one piece. <laughs> it's 
It's from the Amazon. It's way too expensive. Um. <laughs> there are like seven trees left. <laughs> you took one no. for your bed? No, they cloned the trees, and then it's a special Cassium. line of furniture. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, the, the Amazon line. They had a couple <laughs> yeah. extra ones because they didn't need them for their lobby, so they, uh, they, I, I grabbed one of the, lobby? yeah, no, not the, no, the, the, trees. the trees. Oh. In the lobby, and so the whole company did this thing where they were making high-end furniture, and so I, sorry. It doesn't matter. No, that actually totally makes sense. Is this where you do that, like, relaxing stuff? No, I don't even need that anymore. To, like, it's not even comfortable for me to sleep on anymore. I don't know. <laughs> let's just, let's um, just give it to charity or something. Rad. Yeah. Uh, I try to find a door I can go out with this. So as <laughs> as Cass was taking this sofa down and you were unplugging some of your electronics to throw into a box or whatever, <laughs> you noticed that on your uh, networking device that also functions as your communicator here at the apartment, you notice there is one message uh, on your communicator. As I'm like... Like lifting stuff, I notice it, and then I just kind of reach my arm all the way across the apartment <laughs> and then hit, hit, hit play. Yeah, get 12 feet away, just bleep yeah. and play. And you hear, Anton, uh, I don't even know if it's safe to leave this message, actually. I, if last time I saw you, you, well, obviously you know what you were doing, and there was the scary Russian guy with you, and... Um, I, I, I don't know if you're all right or not, and I don't know if it's safe to tell me, so I just wanted to tell you that I hope you're all right, and um, I hope you call me sometime when it's safe to do that. Um, it's weird here. No one at the office is acting like anything happened. It's kind of scary, actually, and even... Mich Michelle is pretending like there wasn't a huge firefight in the middle of the square. Um, I'm trying to pretend like I didn't see it either, and that seems to be working out for me. Um, anyway, I don't really know what else I can say here, except that I hope you're all right, and um, probably best not to come back to work for a while. Yeah. Take care, Anton. Clicks off. Look, uh, uh, I kind of heard the end of that. But here's the good news, right? You used to think you knew what a year from now and two years from now and five years from now looked like? Yeah. But that was never true anyway. You're in the real world now, and that's a good thing. None of us know what a year from now, two years from now, five years from now looks like. So as unreal as all this is, you're an information guy. You know that the person who has the, the best information is in a better position. I'm not, you know what I'm trying to get at here though, right? Yeah. This is true. This is happening and you have a chance now to decide maybe you've only got today and tomorrow and the day after that. But you're working with a much better Piece of information. You need work on your people skills, I think. <laughs> your communication is not great. Uh, not, but, my, not my strong but suit. your heart's in the right place. So, thanks. Your heart could be like anywhere. That's <laughs> also cool. I'm pretty sure it's still in the right place if I still have a heart. I might just have some kind of nucleus sack or something. I don't know. What? Pretty sure you got a heart. Thanks. What's her name? It doesn't matter. Excuse me! I'll tell you, but cynically, I was thinking the less you know about her, the safer she's going to be. Okay, that's a good point. Yeah. I just meant she matters as Michelle. a person, even if yeah. I think your whole life was stupid. It's Melissa. Melissa. That was Melissa that called. And uh, a week ago, I never even considered um, any kind of a romantic anything. And now, now I just feel so lonely. This, this bites. That's change for you. 
What was so good about not considering? I, I, I don't know. The knowing that you could never fail? <laughs> You can do a lot of shit no one else in the universe can do. It's true. Yeah. So lean into that. Mm -hmm. Except I can't lift that bed. I need you to, I really need your help. I'll open up the... Yeah, you gotta fix that fancy we're up, door. We're on, the, we're on the 14th floor. Maybe um, <sighs> I can ooze down and catch it and you just chuck it. I, I mean, I'm game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just don't know if I have the time to hire like a mover right now. Is this really important? Just leave it. Just put it in the corner somewhere. I'm just no, I like your charity this. idea. I'm just gonna abandon this apartment. I'll call. I'll have somebody come and pick it up. Okay. There we go. I can just do that. I can set the, the my apartment door to open at a specific time. Okay. It's no. It's no problem. I'll just pull that up right now. It's no problem. Okay. Yeah. You call up a company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's pretty uh, easy. <laughs> first charity in Los Angeles. That's probably owned by Kylan Kraus. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, these people look poor. Okay, good. I'll assign it to them. Oh. There we go. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, good. Good. They just, just, no, 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 no. Just, just, just go not, there. No. There's I a Baldwin not, Island I... Resource Center. <laughs> just hit that one. Okay. I just meant not connected. I meant not connected. That's good, right? <laughs> We're looking for people that aren't connected, right? Because connected means corporation, which means probably one of many clones. Yes. What was that about people skills? <laughs> Look, I'm under a lot of stress right now, okay? You're a yoga guy! I know. So keep it together! <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not gonna, and someone has to. Okay. Okay, that one. Awesome. Baldwin Island Resource Center. Okay, okay, done. That's good. All right, done. Cool. They'll be here in eight days. They'll pick up my... Massively cloned one piece Amazonian tree trunk bed. It's nice. It's nice. It's very nice. I can kind of sleep anywhere now. It's weird. See that bookshelf over there with the weird design? I put my spine on that the other night. It was really comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So we New, go back? better information. Yeah. Yeah. Should what was we... so good about not knowing? Okay. That's sure. That's helpful. That's good. Is that your like mantra? At what? Like the thing that you... Should we go check in on everybody else? Yes! <laughs> okay, let's go. That was two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Best yes. flashback ever. Well, you guys were fighting fleshy monster things. <laughs> okay, right? Story points. <laughs> Cut to y'all in <laughs> Dolphin Base fighting <laughs> <Yeah>. your lives. <laughs> Flash 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 Sal smashing I'm, I'm hungry. You Honey Baby <laughs> repeatedly into a computer. <laughs> Cut back to. The, we're just at the base. We got time. <laughs> 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 we so. noticed that eventually we could feel the emergency. I tried mm. to call them, wasn't getting through, so you took care of the rest of your business while I Great. eventually I got to call. You, just missed, missed you mistook that bad feeling as hunger. Mm. It's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so right now, indigestion. while Probably. the sun is setting over the Pacific Ocean, um, underneath its waves at Blue Dolphin Base, the group is finally starting to call it quits for the night as everyone's been working on their various projects. Anton, sitting on the corner of the sofa... Um, down here, just kind of keep into yourself with a cup of hot coffee in front of you. Um, tea. 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 Namaste. Yeah. Jensen tea. <laughs> I'd like to call a team meeting, if possible. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> we just, haven't had a meeting in so long. Hey, we, right, it's, right. it's our first ship meeting, guys. I set out paper um, and pencil. No, first? Oh. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Um, so, so Cobalt passes word around that he he thinks we should all meet up in the living area, and slowly but surely, to show you. Okay, everyone filters into the room. Have fun. You yeah. don't want to come? No. I'm I've gonna be got putting some new things to show you that you might be interested in. Cool. I'll check them out. Okay. Do you want to see Al Sal's new outfit? Uh, um. Oh, it's rude if I say no, huh? You can see whatever you want. Okay, but then one of the options is rude. Um, I mean, not rude. You just gotta wait to see the outfit. I just, I'm. What do you? I'm of? almost finished. I'm almost finished. I'm gonna be fabricating in like another couple hours, and I'm really excited about it. And getting the base, everything is great. I just, I haven't been able to focus as much as I want, and it's really exciting. And I'm really excited about my build, and it's gonna be really good. 
We should leave. Understood. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs> you two step out into the hallway. Right. Um, Good luck. Sal is already standing in the uh, in the hallway as everyone's grouped up and is just kind of staring at everybody. As hey, everyone's Sal. Going <sighs> Your outfit's done. And he just stares at you like you just said too many words. And he just goes. <sighs> and I just sort of hang up the garments. For you. A present. Pretty? Pretty? <laughs> Pretty? Pretty? Oh. Reaches yeah. over and takes it. Oh, oh, okay. I'm gonna, is there like a surface <laughs> he starts pulling I can on climb it. up next to him to start helping him pull Not, on? I mean, you can stand on the arm of the couch. Sure. Can I, I stand up you. on the arm of the couch? Oh. He brings you back up to his shoulders. Okay. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you lift me. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, a, it's an interesting sight because... Um, I'm just watching this. Cass, across the room. with Cass's strength, literally could just hold... Luma by her ankles. I'm being and just so <laughs> careful. Uh, except I have to balance. Them, yeah, you're like, like, whoa. I suppose I could. I took ballet for a really long time. Um, <laughs> you're super coordinated. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you lift, ooh, you, ooh, and he's holding ooh. it and looks at you and goes, tall. <laughs> Not as tall as you. All right. And then, um, um, arms up. <laughs> Perfect. And then, um, so I'm slipping like a really nice, cozy, very soft sort of tunic. Okay. Uh, sleeveless dress ish thing on uh, over the shoulders. Okay. And then. Okay, perfect. Um, arm. Okay, Cass, can you put me uh, b- behind? Behind Sal. Okay. Uh, um, oh. Make a perception check. Okay. I'm just watching. Okay. <laughs> it is kind of funny because Sal yeah. is just sitting there just going. Just okay, I have discerning dispositions. No, this is not a disposition. Okay. The like, perception check. So, difficulty for this is going to be two. So, you need six or better. Okay. And this is just a just notice yep. in general. Just a notice. Mm-hmm. It's a nine. It's a nine. Um, nine. As you're pulling the shirt down yeah. on the other part of his arm, just like just at the part where the shoulder blade connects, uh-huh. you notice a very not healthy looking blackened spot that has started to looks like it's it's actually it almost looks like it's an open wound on the lower left part of his uh, of, of the shoulder blade, like right under like, here. Like. Yeah. Theme. Oh, yeah. It looks it looks bad. Um, and as you pull it over, even though the cloth kind of rubs up against it, he doesn't react. It just kind of goes down and just goes. Mm. Uh, mm. How's it going? Yes. And I. He just pats his chest um, and goes. Pretty. Pretty. Okay. So pretty, um, man. Uh, hey, hey. Uh, can you hand me that uh, med kit on the wall? Just some gauze sure. and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I got it. Thing. I got it. I got it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, just a little, just a little cut. Just before I put before I put the clothes on, I just want to make sure that we're all safe. Oh, okay. So wait, you're gonna wait, wait, wait. Is there anything in here that yeah. would help with that? I would say you guys. Well, you don't really know what that is just yet, but there is there is to see me. there is definitely antibiotic creams and stuff yeah, like that in there. There is there is like your standard healthy first aid kit. It looks yeah. fully stocked because obviously that was one and of the first things. And it's like a lab one too. Mm-hmm. So I imagine there's a lot of extra stuff, stuff in here to dilute the chemicals. The thing I yeah, have in my definitely. Exactly. So as you pop this open, yeah, there is stuff in there. Do you? Have. Have. Okay, yeah. okay, now I yeah, can I do it, it, any sort of I'm knowledge so check? Quick. Yeah. Oh, perfect. And I just alerted you to the wound. So, hmm. And I'm. Um. Well, wait a second. I'm curious now, so I want to come over and. <laughs> okay. <see laughs> so he he sees what you're doing and just goes, and just raises his arm for you. Perfect. Thank thank you. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait. Sal's got a little boo boo. Don't. It, um, it's nothing to so worry about. Sal. Can I try something? It's, it's so now now you're actually you're not just glancing at it you're not spotting it now yeah. you're looking at it yeah um does anybody have any kind of first aid or basic I'm trained in healing though. you are yeah you Amy okay. has training in healing <laughs> also uh, can I try zapping it okay remember that kind of worked last time um, the healing it did heal but this might be the exit wound who knows oh shit the other thing <laughs> is we don't know how he would react even if it Too is healing shot. him it's a bit surprising yeah. True, but if it can feel like Sal, you want to sit down? I want him to sit down on the couch. You lead him over, um, and he sits his girth down to the couch. (laughs) (laughs) He sits down. (laughs) 
Um, and I, I just want to be taught while while you're figuring that out. I'm just going to be talking to him to distract him. I'm going to be showing him. Okay, and then this is the final piece that I made you. So do you like that? That's pretty. He looks. Um, he's staring at you, bewildered as these words come flowing out of your mouth. I know, but I'm nervous kind of, talking now. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he just is enraptured. He just keeps. Okay. And so he's not uh, even looking at the things you're holding up. He's just kind of like. <laughs> I'm just um, like Toro, Toro, so, dangling this coat in front of. What do you have? <laughs> so I'm trained in healing, which is designed for restoring points to a stat pool. Um, um, so you can sort of maybe just interpret mm. the idea behind this, the way the skill works is that I decide how many points I want to heal, then I make an action, and that's the difficulty. I think if you have that skill, you have a basic understanding of how healing works like, and oof, what's going not on. not good. Um, yeah. So. Um, I'm trained but not specialized. So the one level, not the two. Okay. Then I'll, yeah, I'll count that. So then I was going to set the difficulty here at four. I'll set it, I'll drop it down to three. So you need a nine or better. Drop it based on the training or before the training? Based on the training. Okay. Yeah. Um, to get an idea of exactly uh, what, because right now okay. Gina's... I would like to encourage you. Okay. Which, um, yeah. So you, oh, but it's, is it only for fights? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I will pull it up for you. Um, Are you sure you don't want me to zap them? <laughs> Plan C. A little, a little zap, okay. Plan C. Zap me. Like a, like, remember with the, um, ooh, like the, uh, feel better. Um, like, can I do like a little spark on my fingers? Like a, uh, oh, a tap um, to, to, to remind him, like, He just kind of stares at it for a second. In? Doesn't seem to really yeah, react like, to it. Whatever. I'm good at people, you too can people, kind of thing. But, but that's this is GM. a heal. Yeah. Not a people. Yeah. I mean, it what do you? I don't have healing. Yeah, I don't. I uh, don't have healing, so I can encourage. The language says that uh, mm. if she talks at her, uh, then uh, allies within short range modify the difficulty of one of the following task types: uh, defense, attack, or tasks related to any skill that you are trained or specialized in. Yeah, it's not gonna fly. Have, yeah, uh, it's um, healing, you're but it's you. not the same. Yeah, right? yeah, and we're no, you don't now. Remember, because we're gonna do the other thing. R but I have it right now. Mm. Yeah, but then we can't declare it. Anyway, right. yeah. all sure, of sure, 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 sure. So, Amy, so the, the thing for Cass to do would be to spend effort, is what I'm guessing. And I can do two of those now because I took that advancement. Yeah. Uh, I've only got nine intellect points, well, but. Did, did you take two effort in. It's not edge that I'm talking about. Oh, right. There's it's a, advanced. Oh, right. Yeah. Tier two. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I'm not at tier two yet, but, but I'm you're on my inching way, towards it. You, got, you that purchased two effort. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Extra okay. effort. Go ahead. Uh, so that will cost me, I want to say, a full six points because I've got no edge. Uh, so it's three points for the initial spend and oh, then two know. points for the second spend. Yeah, so it's five and whatever edge you've got to reduce okay. that, which None? I think you have. This any. is an intellect so task. So five intellect points okay. to drop the difficulty by edge. two. That's you are really focusing on what's going on. So she doesn't have to roll then. No, nah, it takes it down to a one. It takes oh. it down to one. So oh, she's got to roll. Four went to eight. three, and three then the two is take it down. That's right. Uh, my bad. But thank you. Hey, but you know what, though? Um, I'll let you use the first aid kit as an asset. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yay! Yay! Of course. Of course. Yes, they are. So right? this is so. just the, like, I, I am not medically trained, but I've done a lot of patching up mm -hmm. of shit. And you've probably seen like, some pretty effed up stuff when you're on the streets patching up people who got their asses kicked by and I know corporate security who caught you spray painting stuff on walls. Mm -hmm. Like, it's been pretty bad. So, um, so Cass, as you come over to take a look at it. I run with a lot of people. As you come over to take a look at it, the first thing that you notice is, even though he is this big sort of patched up science experiment, Sal doesn't emit any kind of smell. Like, he doesn't seem to have this un unpleasantness to him. But as you get closer to the wound, it has a smell, a distinct smell. Okay. Right. And, um, up, 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 Sal. Um, and as he raises his arm, that doesn't look septic. That looks straight up necrotic. Okay. Um, it looks like, um, and it doesn't, just from the, the, the look of it, it doesn't look like... It looks. Un it doesn't look like any wound you've ever seen. It doesn't look like it was actually. It doesn't look like he was stabbed or anything. It looks like it's pitted itself. It wasn't what I did, was it? You don't know. Oh crap! But um, it's not. It, I'll tell you this. It's not in a place where you struck him. Got it. Okay. So. Um, That's good to know. Um, and the electricity would have flown through his feet. It wouldn't have gone out his back. That's true. I mean, you were blasting him pretty good, and yeah. there was a lot of metal behind him. Um, That's but, true. Um, Is antiseptic going to help with necrotic at all, or at least? Uh, Mm. It's not like an antibiotic ointment is going to be helpful for dressing. Really, what it needs is debridement. 
to scrape out the necrotic tissue. Mm-hmm. The fact that it's in that particular position, like right all up on the lymph node, not super great. Uh, you, you don't want this to hit the blood. This is gonna then it mm-hmm. then you do get the septic statement. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, surgery on the quickness. All right, Luma. Yeah, good news, bad news. Uh, yeah. Good news. We we found the thing. Bad news. I can't fix this. We we need like a real doctor to mm-hmm. scrape that thing out. Uh, but. Like a real doctor? Where are uh, we gonna find a doctor that's gonna know what to do with Sal? If we, Cass, or not Cass, uh, Anton. I'm putting some ointment in. Do you trust anyone at your old company? <sighs> Maybe, yeah. No. Yes. No, no, we can't bring, we can't bring someone we don't know down here. Like, as far as we know, Kylan, or sorry, Fletcher owns <gasps> all the corporations. I'll be right back. And <laughs> run out the door. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, hand the, the uh. coat to Cass. Uh, uh. Keep this safe. And I run uh, back to where Lacey is. Okay. You come charging into the room. Oh, no, I knock. They're uh. working. I knock. Okay, you knock, <laughs> the door slides open. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah? Sorry, I don't mean to disturb you, but there's no, something I really, but there's something really wrong with Sal, and I think he's really hurt, and I, we need a doctor. Oh, okay. Sh- should I go to the dads? Wait, for, oh, wait, what? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Uh, wound under Sal's arm. Um, Cass says it's really bad. Uh, not n- narcotic. Necrotic. Necrotic. That one. That um, means debridement. I don't know what that means, but sure. Um, I mean. Do we know a doc? We we don't know a doctor, so you want dad because he's a bioscient? Was a bioscientist? Maybe. Is that why? Uh, I was thinking, yeah, before we, I mean, I asked Anton if he knew someone in the company, but maybe not bringing more people into the secret is better, and you were going to tell the dads anyway, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Secrets from my dads. I know. I suck at it. Um, yeah, yeah, if, if that, if it'll help Sal, I don't know. Well, yeah. but, um, I mean, I, do I just not, I don't want to be the first ones to tell them, I want that to be okay. your choice, so, um. Yeah. Do you, do you do you want to um, come, or do you want me to just take them here and don't tell them anything until they get here? Uh, I think I would have to come anyway, unless you want to learn to fly the dropship. <gasps> Good point. Okay. Uh, one of us should be learning that. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. in case. Yeah. <laughs> As y'all realize well, that Lacey, Lacey literally the, the only person yeah. that can get y'all in and out of this place. <laughs> skill that takes a really long time to learn. <laughs> unless you're, unless buttons. you've entered the superhero genre. And then we right. came up with uh, Oya, actually. Oh. Uh, I thought that, that Oya would be really good at it because, like, if she had to like dodge something that was incoming, like she would already know that she needed to dodge it, like in the <gasps> dropship. And if she just really good looks at a book and then makes her brain go twenty years in the future, knowing that skill. <laughs> yeah. That. Ooh. So. Whoa. Um, but maybe that ages her brain without her. I don't know. I'm talking uh, out loud. I, I don't know if <laughs> that's how that would work. Why not? Um, Just force her brain into the future and then she knows everything. And or present back. Oya. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh, no. <laughs> Why are well, it's like, like more of a premonition than you know the knowledge, yeah. you know? Sure. Uh, that is premon knowledge. Premon knowledge. Looking into the future to, to when you've that. already read the book. Yeah. And then choosing but, but differently like, to not read it, but retaining the knowledge of the alternate future. No, 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 don't do that. Because oh. then you won't. Because then you won't. Time. You won't know. <laughs> right. You but know. You still have my to, brain. Okay, let's go still get. You're gonna put in the work. You're still gonna read um, the book. Okay. Yeah. You could just uh, shortcut. We got to get you reading comics. You're gonna love them. Doesn't make those. They're dumb. They don't make any sense. <laughs> oh. Doing it wrong. Have I finished with what I made? <sighs> let's see. It's two days. Uh. Is there an experience point expenditure to to, to manufacture stuff? Um, I don't remember. I, I think no, it is for bigger if stuff. If we're going by the crafting rules, and we've decided to speed that up a little bit for the for the sake of like, ever making anything. Yeah. <laughs> uh, at case. the level that like that you're trying Lacey to do. Would well, make, and, I, yeah. and because it's yeah. And there's also the fact that Lacey, you're you're basically operating. Uh, Lacey is a, a one person like team of engineers and scientists. Yeah. So. Um, 
I would say you're probably just finishing it up as Luma has run into the, okay. the area. Cool. Yeah. Because then I can't. Um, before we go, um, I have something for you. Really? Yeah. It was, that was, I told you I was almost done, so. Well, I mean, yeah, but, you know, you got a lot of stuff to work on. Well, yeah. So I worked on stuff for you. Um, anyway, so I remember at the fight when you turned into Anton, like, you you couldn't, like, shape shift clothes. Oh, my gosh, I know. I've been sewing, like, a hundred pieces of clothing just in case to shove in my backpack. <laughs> <sighs> oh. Um, <laughs> it won't be, well, it'll still be a little useful, maybe. Um, but, uh... Kevin sent really good nanomaterials for this, and I hold up a, a nano suit so that you can change. Uh, it's it's responsive to the environment. There's actually the really difficult thing was to match visual perceptions of people around, correctly ascertain the right person's clothing, and then extrapolate all of the angles based on what it's been able to see. It's kind of like the camouflage tech from Costa, that's what gave me the idea, but then actually getting it and then shifting everything, changing Throw shape my is really whole body the, oh, you. <laughs> I imagine Anton's suit probably played something of a role since I've been studying it <laughs> extensively. Um, but there's you also, sewed me a piece of clothing? Mm. I, I, God, I missed you. <laughs> I, haven't even, I haven't even shown you the best part. What, there's more? Well, yeah, it took me two days. <laughs> okay. Do I, should I put this on right now? Yes, do it, do okay. it, and then I can show you. Immediately, you start <laughs> taking everything off and putting this on. Oh, it's really snug. Oh. Yeah, uh, that oh. way, you know, if someone wears something that's really oh. tight, then, you know, that'll work. But, uh, yeah, this thing, this thing clings. It definitely, <laughs> it suits you pretty well. I will say, Luma, even yeah. though this thing clings, oh, yeah. it is totally flexible. It moves yeah, with it's ease. Yeah, like a dope tattoo. Yeah. I'm, f I'm pumped. You're not pumped. <laughs> yeah. um, so you, you know, you know my my uh, resonance that I was gonna give to Cassium. Um, yeah. I figured out better things to do with it, cause uh, you're bad at fighting. Super bad. <laughs> Just, um, but you're you've always been really good at protecting me. So I thought maybe you'd like this and the energy shield activates. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> <gasps> so that. describe that. It's basically a translucent light green energy shield that activates across your forearm. Like a little energy buckler. <laughs> ah. uh, so it'll actually take force. <gasps> so if you want, <laughs> you could hit people with that and then not a crowbar because it'll probably work better than a crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. And it'll keep you safe. It looks like a glowing holographic tech version of Captain America's Wakanda shield. And it kind of goes all the way up to the mid part oh, yeah, of your arm. Oh, yeah, it's like full. Yeah. Just hums with energy on your arm. I know you hate this word, but you are a freaking genius. <laughs> I just want to use my whole brain to make sure that you're okay, because all of this is really scary, and it's scaring me, and I like the making things part way better, and I just want to make sure that you're not scared, too, because you're safe. Yeah. I've been scared this whole time, too. Okay? I thought it was just no, me. No, okay, no. good. <laughs> I'm glad. Are you I, kidding? I, I, you're the person that has been holding all of us together and you got us away and you've, you have done everything to keep us safe. That's because it's the right thing to do, but it, it's not, no, I'm being, not good at this. Lacey, being strong is not not being scared. Right, you only get to be brave if you're afraid first. Exactly. I love you, Luna. I love you so Whole freaking much. <laughs> um, so that will give you 
Yeah. Uh, what did we decide on that? Is it armor one? Um, or two? It's an asset on speed defense. Right. That's Ooh. so it'll make it. Make, make, so flavor flavor wise, it comes off like it's blocking damage. What it really means is yes. just, it's harder to hit you. Yes. A lot harder to hit. And you. does it have any assets to hit with? Uh, it counts uh, as it's a, a light, light weapon. weapon. I weapon. Light so, weapon. It does so you two have damage. proficiency with it right now. And it, so, remember how that's getting traded? Yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. It all comes together. That makes sense. All right. Okay. Luma stands back, okay. wearing the new cat suit, and uh, I mean, this is this is fantastic and <laughs> wonderful. But I want it to. I want to test it. I want to know okay. what. I want to look like myself again for a second. Okay. Um. So I go. I'm like, all right. So I've been toying with some stuff. Tell me what you think. I kind of want to. Snap and see what happens. What I don't know how to how it works. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. as you snap, it just kind of. Does it, does it start? Work, start it working? starts trying to interpret. Do what I try you to, want. Do I just think? What okay, I want? so I put some preloads in. Oh, okay. Uh, so you can cycle through those through your wrist computer. That's networked. But then I also sure. wanted it to be able to match. Like if you saw someone, because if you were trying to imitate someone, <gasps> then you just point toward them. That was the really, really, really hard part. Getting, getting the figuring out yeah. other people's clothes that weren't preloaded. So you have preloads now, uh, but you can capture. It'll extrapolate as best it can. Um, it might not get the the style quite right. Uh, I'll I'll keep working on it though. But those are those are the two different modes. And so uh, these are okay. some of the preloads. And I go through the things that you've been wearing recently, and some of the things that I know <laughs> that you like wearing a lot. It's basically and like two shots things of from yeah. sixth grade. <laughs> That are just now you size. My blue sundress that I hated so much, and then when I got cake on it, I loved it forever. <laughs> oh, good, you like that again later? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. So as oh. you're saying this, <laughs> it were just you, goes. Were you trying? Were you pulling a goof on me? <laughs> pulling I, a goof. I don't pull goofs. Uh -huh. Point to the dress with the cake on it. Yeah, it's interesting because Luma, when the dress forms, mm -hmm. there's this chocolate there's a smear chocolate. just yeah. going right down across the chest. So Cass is proud, and she doesn't even know why. <laughs> <laughs> um, <sighs> real quick, yeah, yeah, um, because we're about to move into uh, setup for the for this for the episode here yeah. scene. <laughs> um, I'm gonna hand out. <laughs> Uh, well, I have to. I have to do this first because yeah. this uh, is also something that would have happened. But so before we move forward, um, after going through two days of setting up Blue Dolphin Base, everyone's going to get a cipher. Woo! Oh, oh. Yeah. Bomb press back. <laughs> um, so it went through the so it means you can store you can ridiculous. store whatever ciphers you have here in the base. Like for example, if you don't feel like opening a naked singularity in the center the of nano, the room nano and destroying bomb. everything. Yeah. Um, so we'll start on your nano side of the table. So. Cobalt, roll a 2d10, please. Oh, can I borrow? Yeah, go for it. Yep. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Hand these out. 70. 70? Oh no, I'm back to real life. Interesting. Okay. What did you roll? What is this? Oh. I don't know. Yeah, no, I've never I've never seen a... Uh, this is interesting. <laughs> I've never seen this before. I've Audience, memorized. anyone who might be new, we're playing the Cypher Super. Roll a D6. Has all these great one-shot item oh. things you can find. Which roll, is a, six. roll a D6. Oh, okay. Three. The user can ask the GM one question and get a general answer. The GM assigns a level to the question. So the more obscure the answer, the more difficult the task. Generally, knowledge that a PC could find uh, could find by looking somewhere other than his current location is level one. Obscure knowledge of the past is level seven. Gaining knowledge of the future is level 10, and so on. Um, you rolled a three? Yes. Okay, so that's, I would say that would be pertinent information that maybe you came across some data here in the base. Uh -huh. So you can ask me one question. And I have to do it now? Um, and No, you don't have to do it now. Oh, okay. But you could say that you, you've uncovered information, you just haven't looked for it yet, but you'll be able to activate that. Um, I'm gonna say it's gonna be pertinent to Cassium, it'll be pertinent to Blue Dolphin Base, since this is where you found it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you can pop that whenever you want. Oh my god. Pop that question. Um, <laughs> Get it? So, ah! Gina, <laughs> roll 2d10. Okay. Oh. 
38. 88. 88. 83. 83. 83. Sorry. <laughs> I just saw the three first. And it's yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> with you and the drugs. Is it drugs? <laughs> it's stim. It's a stim. I got more drugs? You got more drugs. Stop giving me it needles, could have been Eric. It could have been another bomb. That's true. It says. Needles, bomb. You got it, them all. You have a ticket to Burning Man. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's good for one year. Uh, I want a burning <laughs> same. Uh, burning same. Yeah. I'm so hype. <laughs> um, not as okay. weird as it sounds. Exactly <laughs> as weird as it sounds, if not more. So it's a st- what is it? Is uh, so it roll a d6. Stem needle? Roll a d6. Okay. Yeah. I- five. Okay. It decreases the difficulty. Uh, it's a level five. Level five. And it decreases, and that isn't going to play a big role with this, but what the stim does is it decreases the difficulty of the next physical action you, t- or no, it just says the next action you take by three steps. Three steps? Mm-hmm. Increases? Decreases. 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 Okay, I was Makes like, it easier. useless. <laughs> <laughs> no, stick it on someone else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, Lacey. 46. 46. Mind stabilizer. Ooh. Oh. Interesting. That's I think this might have been. I think this might have been yeah. what. Uh, this might have been what Oya rolled. Oh, the the meditation aid. All right, let me check. Mm. Uh, might be something similar. Score three intellect points. I believe was first. Uh, okay. Oh, I think it's a meditation. So, um, you might actually really. This might be right up Lacey's alley, actually. Mind um, stable. At, did you just? Oh, it is different. Stable? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to the dark world. I think that's a compliment. Oh, rad. Okay, roll d6. This is pretty rad. Three, so it's a level three. Mm-hmm. When you use it, the user gains plus five armor to intellect damage. Wow. wow. That's going to be useful. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little device that basically shields your mind. Wow, wow. that's going to be extremely useful. It's a mind Magneto's shield. helmet. Yeah, yeah. essentially, yeah. yes. Amazing. It's, it's basically a little device that fits around uh, like a collar. So you get through kinda, that tail. But it, it doesn't go around your neck, it kind of clips onto the side. Good, that. Makes me panic. We tried chokers once, and it was. Uh, <laughs> um, but and that's how many hours in duration? Uh, it's eight hours. Eight hours. Thank you. Um, here's the thing. Sweet. Uh, that would uh, obviously, I'm sure you know the applications of that. That would be incredibly useful in the dark. <laughs> um, all right. So Cass, go ahead and make your roll. Let's see what Cass finds sneaking around. Fifty-one. Fifty-one. Uh, <laughs> it's another one of these damn things. It's a motion sensor. So roll a d6. Ooh. Oh, I got one of those. One. Those They're actually that. pretty bad. So it's level three. Oh, so for one hour, this device indicates when any movement occurs within short range and when large creatures or objects move within long range. It also indicates the number and size of creatures or objects in motion. Hmm. Wow. Cool. So for it's a really, hour. so if you're like breaking in somewhere, that's a damn good thing to have on you. How does it, like, can you, can, can, it, can it send a signal to my glasses or something? Or like, does it I mean, start it, beeping when there's movement? Um, it would probably send a signal to your glasses and actually let you, I don't see it like, I, I don't see it as like the, you know, the motion sensor in aliens necessarily. Right. It's more of just like a sonar ping, but it's using sensor technology. Cool. So you get a, you get a basic outline of what it is. It, not enough to disseminate what it is, but the size of the creature and how many there are. And also objects, yeah? Yeah. Um, you s- likened it to sonar, just because I also have one of these. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just asking for clarification. Yeah. Is that like active sonar with the implications of no. mutual detectability? Nope, 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 nope. Nope. Dope on a rope. Nope. Thank you. It does uh, not give you away. It's not like sending out a ping. Can I flavor, even though I know that this is a one-time use thing, can I rule that I set it off by running into it in one of the closets? Yes, Thank absolutely. You. You're kidding. That's so Cass. What is this thing? Why won't it stop You so beeping? Cass. Well, after um, flashing or whatever. All right, Anton. <laughs> roll 2d10 <laughs> for me. Yeah, it to try to spare it. Amy, can I borrow this? Please. <laughs> I'm interested to see what Hops gets. Bombs. <laughs> 75. 75? Ooh. That's a sound dampener. Wow, you guys are getting really into the infiltration the equipment the here. Last time. Which yeah. Yeah, we all I had the motion sensor. Is incredibly <laughs> relevant. Very helpful. When the yeah. dampeners on the floor. Um, so you were going to roll a d6. And I got a four. So it is a level six cipher. Ooh. Ooh. And it dampens all sound within immediate range, providing an asset for all creatures in the area to attempt stealth actions. Ooh, that's nice. gonna be useful. So it's like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love you. Yeah. <laughs> it's fair. 
<laughs> it doesn't, it's not a silent spell, but it mutes the hell out of sound. It makes it a little bit easier. Mm. So if you break out into a fight, people could still hear it if they were too close. All right, go ahead and make your roll. Pops, tell me what you got. Don't be too close. To 15 in a fight. All right, finally, Ooh. a low number. Ooh. Handy as hell. <laughs> the you guys' rolls are actually delivering to you things that can be useful now. So roll a d6. Six. Six. Oh, hey. Nice. Wow. So it's a level eight cipher. Holy cow. <gasps> so this immediately, re it's a curative. It immediately restores eight points to your might pool. <gasps> yes. Oh, wow. Oh, 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 hey. Cool. Clone that. <laughs> <laughs> it's essentially a cellular regenerator that kind of just slaps onto your, you just clamp it onto your forearm and it just pings. What sends was out this, like, it? Uh, restores how many? Eight. Uh, eight? It's, it's a level eight cipher, so it'll restore eight points. Yeah. Wow. Chronic flesh. That's a, like Present. that's almost at your level. That's an insta heal, basically. That's yeah, only, yeah. I'd be like, um, <laughs> so while all of this is happening, everyone's awesome. gotten their ciphers. Um, Cobalt, you receive a communique from uh, Miguel. Oh, I'll answer it. And you see Miguel's face come up on the screen in front. Because you have the contact. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So on your you're contacts and the visions, uh, you're see, you're hearing you're hearing a lot of happy squealing taking place in the lab, uh -huh. and then hushed voices, and then happy squealing again. Um, meanwhile, everyone's kind of huddled around um, Sal with worried looks on their faces, and you're kind of sitting there, and you see Miguel pop up on the screen and go, "How you doing, Zet? All right. Uh, well, what's wrong? Nothing's wrong. We have a lead." We have a lead. We have a lead. And, well. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, Lacey, are you here? Oh, yeah. Can we uh, uh, broadcast this call to everybody? Sure. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Lacey, you just kind of reach out, grab the call, and. <laughs> now the call is on the wall. Cool. It spreads up onto the wall, onto the screens, and onto the TV. Like, Convenient. it just pops up everywhere <laughs> in the main area as Lazy just scatter shots this thing all over the electronics. Uh, Miguel. Um, and you, uh, Miguel, Miguel looks like he's unaware. He just goes, oh, okay. Um, hello, everyone. Hey, Miguel. I hope the, uh, the heaters are working down there. I know it's pretty cold. I'm good at repairing things. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I seem to remember that. Um, uh, so I have a pitch. I don't know if you're going to take this or not, but I've been asked to offer this to you all. So here it goes. Kylan, well, he dug some stuff off the data that we captured that uh, the Deathless brought back. <laughs> and we uncovered a Cassium Genetics lab in the Los Angeles forest that we think might be conducting experiments on people. Currently? We don't know for sure, but the data would suggest that there might be living innocent people in that facility beyond just the scientists. And something else that's kind of disturbing. We think they're stealing bodies. From where? We've been tracking morgues missing bodies all over Los Angeles <gasps> no. for the past six months and could not for the life of us understand why. Um, I'm going to put the, earmuffs on Sal. Okay, Sal doesn't seem to be paying attention. Sal is just kind of like poking at his nose Great. and then playing with the tunic. Um, but you put your you put your hands over his ears and he just goes... It, like wondering where the sound went. Yep. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and he says... Uh, we don't have a lot of information, only that we know that this facility exists and all the data that we had captured suggests that this is where these bodies are going. And there's hints that maybe they might be conducting experiments on um, people, but I, I don't know if that's conclusive or not. We do know there are corpses involved though. Sweet baby, fire up Amelia. We're gonna be leaving soon. Understood, Operator Lacey. Do you have coordinates for us, Miguel? Well, I do, yeah. It's in the L.A. forest. Um, I don't know how well... <sighs> this is why it's a pitch, because I need to tell you guys. We don't know anything else about the facility. I don't know what the security's like over there. It, it may be that the security is really light and it relies completely on secrecy. That might be its security. Um, I, I honestly don't know. So just know that I, I can't tell you what you're going into. And I don't know for sure if there's living innocent people there, but Cassium is up to something and we... They're stealing corpses. That can't be good. 
So maybe find out what the hell's going on. And the other thing too is, is we might be able to find something we can pin on Fletcher. I'd immediately open up my stuff and go, we're in. I mean, I'm in. I'm in. Are we in? That is we're really, in, right? There was something that I had found earlier, a, a, a resource file. This is a Cassium experiment. I believe there is some data on this computer about that facility. We can see if it's up to date, but at least we could get some sort of schematic or initial plans. Let's go to work. Yeah, that sounds great. Good job, buddy. And we'll Good pop job. that as soon as we get back from our break. We're six minutes over. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, ah. so let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break real quick and we're gonna get back to it, you guys. Yeah. Um, so stay tuned and we'll be back in 10 minutes. Woo! Welcome back to Los Angeles 2119. <laughs> uh, we're jumping back in tonight's Callisto 6. Uh, you gotta get your staff? Yep, I'm do ready. You, do you though? I do. <laughs> okay. Watch out, Hector. <laughs> oh my god. She's turning, she's turning on everybody. People I'll aim it this way. Don't See, forget to keep things not, that oh. try to kill us. Um, I'm training right, you. So let's, you kept seven things that tried to kill us. Yeah, I take it from them because they don't get to keep them. Sorry. Okay. This this was a rule. I don't know if you were here for it, but it was no, you're right. <laughs> oh no, I see where you're going with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's okay, that's why I have Honey and Amelia. <laughs> um, the staff will be our friend. Okay. <laughs> Her name <laughs> is <laughs> Penny. Because <laughs> she has copper tips like a penny. Sorry. Is that weird? So. No. Does that mean Miguel? With ten? Miguel is he's waiting patiently to hear what you have to say. Right. Um, he just kind of leans. You see him in in the screen as everybody. He kind of leans forward and he says, "What kind of information did you uncover?" Good question. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> well, what sort of information did I uncover? GM? Oh, you're just going to act. Well, cipher. this is this is where you ask me a question. Yes. So, you ask me a specific question. What, what would you like to know? What, yeah. What kind of no? Can, uh, can we confer before that question sure. is yeah. asked? <laughs> I guess that's up is that to you. That, is that how that works? We should use break. Team huddle. No. Okay. Oh. Okay. This so is how it in. works. Okay, whatever it. information you uncovered is what is the answer to whatever question you're about to ask me. Okay. So whatever you would like to ask me, and it's obviously in regards to Cassium. Yeah. Security. Go ahead and. That's what I was going to ask. I just wanted to know <laughs> what were the security you. measures that were put in place as of the last time this data was relevant. Mm. So you just basically want to know what the security is at this place. Yes. Yeah. Okay, it's actually on the outside, light security. On the inside. I'm sharing this with everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, oh, Miguel. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the outside, light security. Couple of guards and maybe some scouts. Um, it does have a fence, it does have a landing pad. Um, it is a small, what looks like a one story building and doesn't look very large on the outside. Mm. Very large in the sub-levels, though. Goes down deep, about mm. uh, about eight levels. Mm. Um, but the eight levels that are down below are very large. They're about four times the size of the facility that's on the surface, mm. which makes up a large network. It essentially, looks, it's, it's an office building underground, is what it looks like. Did you give us a name for this base? Uh, yes, I do have a name for the base. It is simply called uh, Site Number 78C. Is what it was designated. Um, now, on the inside, it has it, it, you get a general information, general idea of what's on the inside. Um, there are references to something called uh, Subject C ninety twos. I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Um, subject C-92, is, there's also some reference to some Traeger security droids that are inside, <laughs> which <laughs> amuses. Lacey um, IRL. <laughs> yeah. Um, but um, for the most part, it looks like the deeper you go, the more hazy the information is. Um, but it does hint at uh, genetic testing. It does hint at genetic manipulation, the stuff that you're all learning about anyway. Any yeah. mentions of the letters S A L? Yes. <gasps> oh no. What is it underneath, spell? underneath subject C ninety one. Oh. Sal is C ninety one. Now remember, this information is probably twenty years old, or as old as this station. But we can use this as a, a, a base point and try to infer, sort of, where it would be today. And we actually might find something in there that's going to help us with Sal, too. 
Miguel just nods and says, It's going to be dangerous. Are you going with them? I believe I could go with you. Um, oh, I've, God. I've been practicing, Miguel. I can do it. I can handle this. Can you throw a punch? Kylan's going to be n- not happy. If he finds out. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that. Miguel, come on. For old time's sake. I'm doing good. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. It's, it's Cobalt's secret. You don't tell other people's secrets. Never. So you don't tell Cobalt's secret, right, Mikkel? Something happens to you, it's on me. Then it's not a secret anymore, and you can tell. Yeah, this, I'm not as whimsical about this as you are. I, it's not whimsy. I it's reality. Want, something happens to you, Kylan. This is a reconnaissance mission. This is a stealth mission. I was built for this. Can't argue with that. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, on one condition, you... We never had this conversation. What conversation? You agreed to stay at Dolphin Base. Sure did. Great. Someone's Thanks got to so much, Cobalt. With Sal. And uh, you guys will make sure nothing happens to him. But he's staying behind. Yeah. Well, he's right. going to guard the base. It'll be Excellent. Fine. Well, thank you for taking that action to make sure nothing happens to him. I'm glad we're all in agreement. Mm. Uh, I'll feed you the information as the location of the base. Are you... Do you all need anything? This mission? Are you, yes. Yeah. What about Oya? What about me? You all turn and she's standing behind everybody. We're rescuing people from a Cassium lab, so we have Possibly. practice now. This is like the second time we save people from a Cassium lab. So we're going to be really good at it, because we practice. Um... <laughs> No one else really notices this, except Cass, because Oya's been your friend for so long, and to everyone else, it just plays off like Oya's trying to be dispassionate and do what's right. So to the rest of you, she says, okay, then I guess, well, I mean, I suppose one of us needs to make sure Sal doesn't, you know, eat all of our food or something crazy, right? Oh, he's also heart, so. Um, while she's saying this to everybody and everyone's kind of, oh yeah, nodding in agreement, you have actually noticed that she's holding, it looks like she, like somebody's holding something that they're trying to remain hidden behind her back. To everyone else, it looks quite natural, but you notice there's movement, like she's wringing her hands. Mm. And she just nods and says, are you all gonna be okay if I stay here? Yeah, I mean, do you think that you can take care of Sal? He's got a boo boo under his arm that needs very tending to. How? Maybe I could do something with that. Where is it? Right under oh, his, oh, his right uh, shoulder. Sal, right. Do you have expertise in surgical debridement? She's like, no, but I might be able to reverse whatever happened to him. Why didn't we think of that? Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't think it's way better than stuff. zapping him, that's for sure. Um, <gasps> Sal walks over and just goes, My dad. <sighs> I come over with Sal, Sal. Okay. but obviously I'm trying to get a look behind her back. Okay. Um, so you just kind of casually, she's so focused on this. So we'll get to that in a second. But as you move over, mm-hmm. um, Sal just goes, mm-hmm. pulls up his jacket, his, his trench coat, basically. And you just, put the jacket on? Uh, yeah. Okay, for everyone at home, uh, Sal is in a long yellow trench raincoat <gasps> with oh a hood. He just pulls it up. You hear the squeaking noises as it's rubbing against itself. It just, <laughs> it just pulls this up. Dimensional and salt yeah. can. Oya looks at it, and y'all see this black, this nasty little, like, about that <sighs> big. But it's big enough, and it... it, it what, not only is it alarming looking, but it's alarming that it's not causing him any real pain right now. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sal just kind of stands there, and Oya goes, oh. Ooh. Um... I can try. Try. While this is happening, you've kind of just, you're like, oh yeah, and kind of glancing down at Oya's hands. Her hands, Cass, they're still for one moment, and then they are a blur of hands <gasps> in the next moment. Like, her right hand looks like for a split second, you're seeing snapshots of her hand oh. as it moves through time Whoa. from the future to the past in one second. So it just kind of has a butterfly effect where it goes like, 
and then she flexes her fingers and it goes, comes back. But it looks like she's trying to get it to stop. And she's like keeping her cool and just goes, yeah, maybe I can do something with that. Oya, can I have a word with you about the wound? I don't want to say it in front of SAL. Oh, yeah, sure thing. Okay. And I'm just, I'm, you put it down and I'm, I'm buttoning the coat and I just say. He just stands there and lets you button the coat and just. Sal, you don't like water, right? No. I put the hood up over his head and I just say, oh. protect from water. It kind of hangs down just <laughs> uh, over his eyes and he just goes. Like, you know, when you put dogs in little doggy <laughs> yeah. with hoods and just kind of. Protect. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> Very pretty. Um, Very. You walk into the back room with Oya, and she's like, "What's up?" What the fuck? Why are your hands dis- disintegrating? What's happening? <laughs> she she hushes you, and again, like her hands just like spread out, and then you did it again. She goes, "Stop it!" Just what the fuck? I don't know. I don't know. It does this sometimes. I'm still trying to figure it out. Okay. It's not just my hand. Check this out. And then she waves her arms and it's like this this effect of multiple arms like Shiva just and then back down again. She goes, I know I'm not high. You're not high. Do you know? Do you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We are in a lab and I found lots of needles. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> it's like a lair. It'd be a very cast thing to do. I just noticed that when I use the power a lot, sometimes this happens. Does it feel okay? It feels okay, but it can be a little disorienting. And sometimes I see what happened five seconds ago instead of what's happening right now, and sometimes I can see what's happening in two seconds or so. I've managed to time it out, and it's really, I've been throwing up, because it's kind of weird. Why didn't you tell us? Because I want to understand it before I worry anybody. Um, Also, I'm I make her own space. <laughs> also, I'm kind of getting a handle on it. It's mostly to do with timing it so that I make sure that I don't use my power too much. But I'm also becoming more comfortable with it. It's just, it's like trying on a new pair of shoes. I'm just trying to get used to it. I'm breaking it in. Boots. I like that. Boots. You'll call us if. You feel goddamn anything? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is he gonna be okay with me? I don't think I should actually use my power on that. At least not until this chills out a little bit. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Okay. But if you got any more trail mix. <laughs> trail mix. Love that stuff. Um. Okay. Uh. Be careful and don't let hops like run off and do something. Is this a time thing? Kind of a time thing, but then there was also the time where she just ran in a certain direction when. Who would do that? I I was in the middle of corporate LA and there was 40 people. I'm not criticizing, I'm just saying she was always so desperate to help and I sometimes get snapshots of things that could happen. Don't let hops run off. So stick to the plan? Whatever plan, just all I know is, and my instinct is just telling me, whatever you do, don't let hops run off. Okay, I can do this. I can be plan girl. <laughs> and, and, and probably don't don't tell hops that, because she'll get really spooked. Well, yeah. Too late! <laughs> yeah. I don't like the idea of you on the wrong side of this ocean again, in trouble again. I'm not in trouble yet. And on, I, I should also tell you, I don't know if my visions are always accurate. I've noticed that it's, it's like I, I see a bunch of different pictures and then I have to pick which one seems, I'm still learning how to do it, but I have to pick which one seems like it's the most likely. Does that make sense? It's not easy. No. You put too much pressure on yourself since you were born. You gotta stop. I just wanna be useful to you guys and I want to use this power and I've had so much trouble using this power and it's starting to really piss me off. 
I have no idea what I can do, and I have no idea what I do at all. And yeah, well, as cool as all this is, this power is lucky to have you. Okay, <laughs> so I'm talking to you, weird ass energy. Calm down and work with Oya. <laughs> we'll be back soon. Okay, I'll make sure. It, it, she just goes, "Thank you." Uh, I'll make sure to not mess around anymore. <laughs> I'm not good at this. A little power puppet. <laughs> she just kind of waves again, and the fingers kind of blur. If it wasn't so scary. It'd be cool as hell. <laughs> no, it might be a great practical joke to walk in there and tell Ant, like, hey, "What's wrong, Anton? Are you seeing something weird?" <laughs> like, she's like, "Just mess, mess with people." <laughs> okay, you call us. I'll call you. Okay, um, so everybody. We're gonna cut now to on board. So, quick question: Are you bringing honey? Yes. Okay. Are you? Is is Self mission? Is sweet baby in my backpack on? Is it though? Sweet baby's backpack. Like, yeah. Huh. It is. Oh, wait, we're doing the drop. We're taking Amelia, obviously. I don't know how this is supposed to be a stealth mission. We have. It has <laughs> to be, we have the first stealth jet. This is this is hot <laughs> fucking camouflaged with beautiful. All right. Oh, we have to park far away so, so they don't. Suspect us, or we could. Y'all are flying over. Y'all have flown over Los Angeles. Um, outside the windows, you're watching the city lights start to disappear, and you've actually entered into an area that very few of you actually venture towards. An area that, of California that's still under heavy environmental protection in this day and age. Good. Um, the California, uh, the Los Angeles forest, which is still standing, though significantly smaller than it used to be. Um, and question, Eric. Yeah. On the way over there. Or even beforehand, would Anton and I feel feel like the answer is probably no, but would Anton be familiar with anything in the information that we got from this secret lab? Any terms? Would Anton the keywords? Any so keywords, here, anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. This this is an incident where if you wanted to, you could burn an XP to know something, mm-hmm. to get a short term benefit, and in which case, Hector, in that case, if you were willing to do that, it would be you telling me what you want to know, mm-hmm. or, or what you know is a fact, and then just run it by me. Okay, um, I think I want to do that. Uh, but you know what I'm going to do, though? What's that? Because I have never forgotten the two XP that you spent, <laughs> the three XP that you spent, <laughs> that didn't come to fruition because mm-hmm. of how that everything went down. I'm going to give it to you for free. Okay, great. And I'll say okay. you have two. You have two left. Okay, so, great. Um, so what would you like to be true? Uh, what I would, what would like, like to, to be true is for Anton, as an entry-level employee, to have some of his wires crossed, but to, ha- to like have heard rumors about experiments involving Subject 92, is what you referenced? Subject C-92. 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 To, for that to maybe mean a different thing than what it actually is, but for Anton to have heard that term before. Okay. Does that make sense? Then we'll say C92 you've heard in terms because it's connected to your suit. Um, mm. when, you, when you said this thing was supposed to save lives and they were talking about building a suit that could possibly hold people together when mm-hmm. they were dying, mm-hmm. um, C92s apparently um, are somehow related to the same regenerative properties that they were trying to instill into the suit. Mm. But you don't know to what extent. Mm. Okay. Zombies. We're zombies. Okay. Uh huh. No. So I will relay all of that information to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So cool. Luma's just That's going. Cool. Have you ever seen Resident Evil? Yeah. <laughs> Resident Evil. Have you ever seen We're Alive Frontier? Yeah. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Who hasn't? <laughs> you know, I've seen um, I watch, watch, you know season ninety two. <laughs> season ninety two was rough. <laughs> season season ninety two. <laughs> My God, and Xander's still alive in season ninety two. <laughs> Mandates um, put a lot of mandates. <laughs> uh, I would like to have a scene in the in the ship before we land, though. Okay. Too. Yeah, yeah. So let's do. And quick, we need to come up with a quick plan. Yeah. Let's do quick. So, mm-hmm. so on I'll the just, way. So yeah. As y'all are on the way, what I'm uh, you notice that the city lights the, of the mega city that is Los Angeles starting to vanish behind you. Um, the towering spires that glitter in the night of corporate LA reaching towards a somewhat cloudy sky and the, pac- the moon across the Pacific Ocean. You can even see Raft City um, from this distance, the, the, br- the, go- the brilliant gold lights casting a glow across the waters of the Pacific. Um, and slowly those lights begin to become more and more scarce. 
and sort of a scattering effect begins to take place, less columnized and more scattered until eventually you're entering into the area of Los Angeles Force. And out here, it's the, the effect is just as jarring as it is in real life, where once you leave the city lights and the light pollution dies down and you're at high altitude, the world opens up in front of you. And you get a glimpse of what this planet looked like before we fucked it up. Um, you can see clear skies. You can see the Milky Way stretching up across the sky in the middle of the night. Um, and then the darkened sort of blue glow of the horizon as y'all are racing over these huge treetops at high altitudes. Um, what would you like to do inside? So... I know that we might be going into a difficult situation, so I wanted you to be familiar with what I'm able to do. I've figured out some things over the last couple of days, if you don't mind. Uh, so I'm gonna grab um, a, a bag that's that's nearby, okay. and it just happens to be like a bright red bag. Uh, and so I pull it out, and for example, uh, you all found me and I was completely out of phase and I haven't been able to sort of return to that since then. And as you see, I'm unable to pass through objects. That's good, you're on a ship. We're flying. But... Good fall. I have done some experiments and things that are emitting a light wave of 450 to 495 nanometers in, in length, mm -hmm. it, well, I'll just show you. So he sprays it blue. <laughs> And he's able to pass through it. Oh! Like shadow That's cats. new. His hand phases right portals? through the solid. Well, comes back out. as of now, it's it's only myself. I've I've tried with other things, or other people, but I, I haven't been able to to do that quite yet. But as of now, anything that registers as as, as blue on the spectrum, I'm able to pass through. That is yeah, so cool. cool. Yeah, there are some other things too, but uh, it's okay. This is the main important thing. That's fascinating. Have I'm you, adding that to my data on cluster six. I'm not sure how far this extends or uh, light blue versus dark blue, but reds and, and warmer colors are completely impossible for me now. I don't know if that's the case in the future. Hmm. Have you experimented with organic material? I seem to be able to pass through it as long as it is blue in color. No shway. That's so cool. <laughs> Get on this way. Okay, look. Uh, we need to. I don't think we should park on the landing strip in front of the the base. We don't need to give them another uh, reason to know that we're coming. We should probably park like a mile or two away and kind of sneak up if anyone's okay with that. I don't know if there's room. Wait, there's, on well, hang on a second. Linda, Cass there's... is watching Hops just weird with a sort of suspicious air. We've hmm. got light security outside of this building, yeah. right? So... But the minute we bring a giant dropship right in front of it, it, it probably the security's probably gonna get a little bit heavier. I mean, a dropship that's their company's. Covered in paint? I'll fly by, it's stealth paint. Uh, I'll fly by. See. We can see whether there's surveillance, and I can try to turn off the surveillance and their uh, communications devices, and then we can land, and they won't be able to alert people. Oh, that Then work. I won't have to wheel two miles in a forest. Mm. All right, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Cass will the guards, and then we'll go in. <laughs> Operator Lacey, you here? Yes, sir, baby. If necessary. The chassis can be provided in order to carry you to where your destination may be. That's very kind of you. Do you want to go with Honey Bee? Or do you want to just come with me? What would the operator prefer? Um, I, 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 I devolve that decision to you. It's, it's your uh, bodily autonomy. Processing. <laughs> <laughs> We wish to remain with Operator Lacey. Of course. You always will be. Um, you're, you're hooked into Aurora now. Understood. Activating uplink. Lacey, Lacey, did you tell SB about the, about the symbol? <laughs> oh, yeah. I should say SB. There's a buzzing SB, noise SB. as they're talking. Did they, uh, did they like it? Um, uh, <coughs> tell, tell Luma what you told me when I showed you uh, the <laughs> Callista 6 symbol. See, baby. I hope it's okay that I used your eyeball. Um, you just hear see baby go, I believe my reply was, hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see honey just go, <laughs> and then the glow comes onto green. I attempt <laughs> to high five a robot. 
This You're battle droid one. that Honey you or... punched across the face just stands up to its full height. <laughs> and it looks at your hand and... Hey, close enough! Yeah. Hey, honeybee, awesome. the dropship's in motion. What do you do when the dropship's in motion? You sit and you have your safety belt on. Understood, Operator Lisi. Thank you. <laughs> I it. Honey goes back over and just <laughs> crunches down on two seats, grabs a seat belt, grabs a second seat belt, stretches them across, and ties the seat belt across <laughs> its legs. That's probably in This thing is huge. It's taking up two spots, and it just sits there crunching down on these seats with a tied seat belt. And it's just kind of awkwardly shaking as the dropship moves. <laughs> We're not real far out now. Uh, we'll be there pretty soon. Um, so closing in. Um, so the only indication that there is any facility out here is not only the sensors, but you also spot two very small lights, probably for the front of the facility to spot things that are moving within the, the compound. Um, as you're getting closer, Lacey, you are starting to feel, it's interesting because being out into the Los Angeles forest like this, it's so quiet out here. It's so, in Los Angeles, at a distance, you can hear the, the hum of conversation between programs and machines talking to each other. Out here, there's just no din in the background. Like, it's like, for us, it would be like walking outside in LA, and even though no one's around, you can still hear a highway about 10 miles away, mm -hmm. and all the, the, the breath of the traffic as it moves. Um, that has been vacant, except as you get closer to this facility, there must be a lot of machinery down there because you're actually picking up that soft hum again. It's yeah. very small and localized, but it's there. Um, kind of hard to suss out, but as y'all are approaching, you are able to spot that facility. You're at an altitude of about 600 feet right now. Okay. Um, Anybody need a potty break before we recon? No, I'll take you up on that, sure. Cool. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love right. that I'm flying a ship. <laughs> I would say I could take over, but I cannot take over. <laughs> would you like me to take over flying Operator Lacey? That's a great idea! I didn't even think of that. Thank you, sweet baby. Oh my gosh! Okay! <laughs> As you do that, you see Honey in the back just go... <laughs> oh. And the ship goes... <laughs> everyone kind of just it shudders for well, a second. Well, got it, sorry. And then, it's, and then it stabilizes completely. You have take over? Take over complete. Thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, and Lacey clearly, desperately had to go. I highly advise that anyone who requires urination to engage in that yeah. completely. Always Thank do you. a potty break Baby. before the mission. Free stream. Free stream. <laughs> We're the only superheroes in history to take a potty yeah. break. I'm yeah. so proud right yeah. now. We're just like, you know, if we get captured in Asteroid M, guys, we should pee before have we it. get there. Yeah. <laughs> you never know. Bathrooms in Asteroid okay. M might have to be nice, yeah. though. Uh, <laughs> I would like to point out in issue one of Invincible, the lead character, Mark Grayson, is seen taking a dump. So that's, <laughs> no. hey. Hey. that's great. Progress. <laughs> that's um, kind of, yeah, that's great. Progress you can depend. I didn't know you were going to do it. Lacey, is your intention oh. to try to locate machinery or <laughs> surveillance at this de at this altitude? Uh, that's gonna be real hard for me, but I can just like take a stab at it. Okay. At least. Um, um, I'm gonna say at 600 feet, yeah. that's not possible yeah. for Lacey. Yeah. Um, uh, you can hear the hum of, of the machine, of like the machine conversation, but you cannot make out anything. I would say to give you an idea to better to better suit it because I imagine Lacey's probably been kind of trying to get comfortable with how far that they can listen and connect. I would say your chances of actually connecting before you know as it's getting yeah. this would be very difficult. But I would say two hundred feet. Pos right. So long range with a difficult roll, distance activation. Yeah, I would say. I generally do without a roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I'm learning like tech memory. It's it's like muscle memory, but for tech stuff. Uh, so... At 200 feet, they will definitely hear and spot yeah. a dropship. Okay. Mm. Shit, maybe this was a bad plan. <laughs> we went with the plan we had at the time. Uh, is there a landing spot? Mm -hmm. uh, right on top of the building. That isn't outside the building, yeah, or is it just gonna have to pop off? No, 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 no. There's, there's roads that actually lead to this place. So there is actually open terrain wide enough for trucks. And the dropship, it'll be a tight squeeze, but you can... I, I mean, with your role, so you would... baby's basically parking mm -hmm. assessment. Yes, yeah. essentially. Why? I'm, I'm okay. I'm in the, I'm in the bathroom, looking in the mirror, just being like, "What am I supposed to change into? I don't know what these people look like." <laughs> just okay. Um, I'm, uh... <laughs> oh, okay. I've got an idea. Um, 
so I want to tr- ch- change into um, one of the high-level Traeger uniforms. Okay. Can I? Like, I've seen them before. Yeah, they you probably us. saw them at the convention. I've seen them at the con- I mean, they're standard Traeger, mm-hmm. like, security units. Yeah. So, like, the people, not the droids. Um, uh, oh, so yeah. yeah! So I've seen them, and I want to dress as that. Um, and all... What do I do with the face? She's not face. Um, you while you're figuring this out, the you find a back road that's no longer in use, um, and I'll give you that. That's it used to go off into the forest where there was a fire watchtower. Perfect. All right, so you guys are setting down. Mm-hmm. Um, it's still gonna be a Tom, I don't know. actually with your powered chair, Lacey, It's probably not gonna be that big of a bitch to get to the to the. It's place. actually not specifically because uh, that design doesn't have casters to stick in the dirt. Oh, it's just rear I wheels, see. which makes okay. it a lot easier. There's okay. street tires, but like it's actually not gonna be that bad. Okay, cool. <laughs> it's not it's not ruin a planet of sand. <laughs> Which went fine. <laughs> and the, did it we? did go fine, actually. Rue was the only one that didn't have a problem with the sand. I know. <laughs> We're all like, sand's hard. <laughs> How do I sand? How do I sand? Sand is the worst. Anyway. <laughs> Moving um, on. Yes. So, yeah. Hmm. Memories. Oh. What's going how, on? How many bathrooms are on the dropship? Oh, we're all just cycling through. Oh, okay, cool. So there's just one potty? Yeah, okay, I think it was me because I cut you in line yes. and then oh. you went and now it's mm-hmm. Luma. Mm-hmm. And I'm the last one and I've just been mm-hmm. in there for a while. It would charitably be described as a potty. What it is is basically a closet that connects. Like in a plane. Yeah. But there okay. are now yeah. grab bars. Did you just yeah. knock on the bathroom door? Okay. Okay. Luma, are you okay, okay in there? She uh, fell in. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, <laughs> the, <laughs> the door opens and Oniko is standing in front of you. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, Oniko is standing inside the dropship, and you all see her with a, an unusually concerned looking face. <laughs> like, we know it's Luma, but I'm still gripping my The spine. The initial reaction yeah. is like, you see yeah. basically a, a woman of clear Japanese descent standing about 5'5", five five with short uh, cut um, black hair, um, and a very fine, well-fitted suit. Um, I really liked her suit. And she's talking, which is unusual for yeah, Nicole. That's, that's look. If you're gonna have to do that, you're gonna have to get way meaner. I'm sorry. Way I figured. Serious. I figured, I, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, I was. Uh, can so you worried. can you warn us next time? Because you practically gave me a heart attack. I mean, we you would knocked. punch I, you in the face. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't believe I didn't punch you in the face. <laughs> I can't believe she didn't punch yeah. you in the face. Thank work. you for not punching me. I in was the very face. surprised. I promised to punch Oniko if it's actually her. I'll do you, better. You all <gasps> feel the dropship lurch oh. a little bit as you touch down. Um, you hear I, sweet baby I just figured. This is the face that wouldn't get questioned the most, like f- out of fear, That's and and I and then I literally yes. don't have to give them any information, and I could maybe even take Honeybee with me, and I just look like I've been sent here. That's true. But the problem is, you're not gonna have a Honeybee activates Cassium like handler with you or anybody or trans or like nobody to talk on your behalf because uh, I, I'm you hoping never they speak. won't ask any questions. I mean. Do, can you is imagine anyone, anyone can... asks someone like Oniko questions at lower level? That's well, a here's point. the here's a good idea though. If you actually go up there with the droid, hopefully it will distract them enough exactly. for us to kind of get some kind of Scoot perimeter and be your else. backup. The only problem is, is what if they attack you? What if Oniko doesn't have any presence here? I'm not gonna attack. I don't think they would attack the right hand. No. <laughs> Honeybee is now fully activated. All right. That's your... Well, that's true. You got you got Honeybee to protect you at least. Yeah. So we'll all circle around. And I got this now. To... And the shield goes Whoa, up. Whoa! So that's I'll... new. The heck? I just point. <laughs> no, nice. Shrek, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, I figured um, Lacey had an amazing idea that I seem to be in punching distance pretty often, so. It's <sighs> very true. Okay. All right, okay. You're also in punching distance, but you're good at punching, and Lim is not good at punching. Okay, okay, so that's part one of the plan. What, Lacey, what, what were oh, we gonna say? Uh, distract. And get access, uh, circle around, and um, cast the guards. Yep. Well, okay. On it. When do you do your genius thing? Where you, uh, you know, before yeah. anyone gets near, I can okay. do it from pretty far away. Probably before anyone else gets close. And Hops, you stick with me. 
Sure, I can help you take out the guards. That's that. I'm not worried about the guards. The guards are the easy part. What I'm concerned about is once we get inside and go down there, then let's find out. We need to find an. Ass- All right, okay. We won't I'll, know until we know. I'll circle around to the back. Yeah. And, and I have my own entrance. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, okay, let's Just go. Be very careful. They'd have to catch me. I don't think you can face through a bullet. The land, the ramp just goes down in the back of the ship, and you see the dark of night okay. just out in front of you. The cool air of the forest comes blasting into the. Ooh. What's up? Uh, can I, just as a just as a thing, can I also manifest like the rapier that she has as like part of the outfit? But it's not pullable. It's literally so part, part of the clothes. Just so you know, the that. rapier is always hidden on Oniko. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I thought it was like an intimidation. No. It's visible. It's totally like the Palpatine lightsaber. It is hidden somewhere Got on it. her body. Okay, she, never mind then. I just yeah. wanted to make myself look as yeah. much like her as possible. Yeah, no, no, no. She, she looks, comp- the most terrifying thing about her, aside just from her demeanor and her, her focus, is the fact that she lo- always looks unarmed. Okay. <laughs> remember, Luma. I'm just I'm just walking around practicing her, like, gait. Luma, Don't remember. talk. You Don't are, oh, talk. You are the <clears throat> most intimidating, terrifying killing machine. All of and those. you are a raging psychopath. <laughs> Do we know that? Better, better, <laughs> better than How, it was Okay, before. don't talk! Mm, sorry. <clears throat> internal, internal, remember. Which is frankly are, weird. It is, um, but you are okay. above everyone. You're above, you're better than everybody. Mm-hmm. There it oh, is. Whoa. that's it. Whoa. Honeybee, uh... We have a winner. Stay nearby. Uh, Luma. Oh, don't, stop. Confirmed, Luma. Operator Lacey. Friendly Luma. I will be standing next to you as you go. Uh, Luma's not going to talk, uh, except nonverbal, uh, acknowledgments and orders, uh, to your best understanding. Thank you. Honeybee stands and stares at you for a little bit longer and says, you see the, the Oculus go, mm-hmm. kind of zooms in on you a little bit. I squint back. Um, and then it just goes, identify. Oh no. Identify. This the arm friendly. goes up. Oh, this is friendly Luma. I quickly change my irises back to Luma's. Okay, it so notices. That he can scan me. Utilize retinal identification. Get all of <laughs> it. You see the, the Oculus kind of twist up and back and says, This unit does not have ocular identification. <clears throat> However, Operator Lacey has dig- designated you friendly. <laughs> it goes back in, and it takes a second, <laughs> and then his hand <laughs> lowers. <laughs> I've been like closing my, my <laughs> thing so yeah. I remember not to. Yeah. Um. Uh. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe no. Uh. Just tell them that I am Luma. We definitely don't want this thinking that Oniko is a friendly. We could reprogram <laughs> oh, later. Yeah. yeah. In yes. case that doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> In case Oniko is already there. No, I'm saying, in case. Never mind. In case you don't walk in the door and Oniko's like, oh, hey. That's what I mean. (laughs) This is my vacation home, you guys. That's a possibility? Um, Exactly. No. Um, I'm linked linked to Honeybee. It's okay. I'm Luma. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You all make your way in the darkness. Um, it, it is a, a bit hellacious traveling in the pitch black Los Angeles forest on this back road, and it's cold out here right now. Ow! Um, oh, damn it. It's it's not that cold. It's not the cold of the Pacific Ocean. It's that chill of the mountain air, kind of cold. Um, y'all keep walking, and but it is, sounds beautiful out here. There are the sounds of crickets, and you can hear the wildlife of the forest as y'all are walking. Although crickets and everything tend to get quiet as honeybee just. <laughs> this glowing green uh, reticle in the middle of the night. Um, After about 10 minutes, you guys start coming up on the perimeter fence, um, the back back area, um, where there are two guards you can clearly see off in the distance and a chain link fence that's about 14 feet high with rows and rows of barbed wire that Lacey, you instantly can tell and hops, you can instantly feel the electrical currents flooding through it. They're lethal levels of electrical currents. and what else can I feel tech-wise? Um, there are security cameras. It is our warehouse scenario in many ways. You can de- you can detect um, you can detect a few security cameras on the outside. There are two, um, and they are holding pulse rifles. 
Um, Subvocal. Speaking of what I was I can speak okay. to them. No. If you can shut down security, um, get us an open door. And they are currently kind of, you can tell one of them's like leaning a little bit, like it spotted something door? off in the distance. Yeah. Go, around, go through the front okay. door. Okay, I, I stop Wait, what and to the, to, to Honeybee, like follow me and I'm gonna loop back around to the front. <laughs> and sub vocal. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> okay, I love you, <laughs> love you. Um, takes you guys about 20 minutes to go around the perimeter without being seen. So it takes y'all, y'all are kind of waiting impatiently in the dark, I don't just kind of mind like. If I'm seen. Huh? I don't mind too much. Yeah, but if I'm around, seen. Coming around. I, I, I'm coming around. Yeah, you don't want to be, you don't want to be seen stalking through the woods and then coming yeah. around the front. <laughs> um, so maybe, that, maybe that's Oniko's thing. Um, yeah. uh, what's up? Obviously, like, we need to get over the fence. So, or under the fence. How far do we feel the current going into the ground? Not far. Can I just um, uh, maybe about a foot? Try and what it stop the current. When you get up to the fence, you could probably try that. Yeah, we could just burrow under the fence, maybe. Do we need to take out these guards? Uh, well, they, they're they're on the other side of the fence. Over there, they oh. don't see us yet. Oh. We're trying to get over the fence. Okay. Um, or you can just you can bend throw us over. over. <laughs> you can bend over. You can toss over. I can get in. I can you climb. <laughs> you can walk through. You can climb. Excuse me, so, Lindy. If you help me, stretch over. I don't bend. I stretch <laughs> over. It looks you would bendy. Do the stretchy thingy. Do the um, yoga. So if you get me, I'm the only one who needs help. Let's right. the three of us go over the fence. Take care of the guards. You take care of the security that might see us. What security? Okay. Nice. And it helps you stay on standby. Well, I can turn the fence off. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I've never passed through anything that was electrically charged, so I don't It won't know. be. I'll, it won't okay. be. All right. So the front of the building, um, we'll cut to that first. You come emerging from the darkness, a lot like a specter in this fine suit with a 12-foot battle droid in full, like, fully armored up. Um with the green oculus just kind of looking coldly ahead as the two of you emerge from the darkness. And immediately the two security guards, obviously seeing what they initially may have thought had been a firefly, until they started hearing the heavy, like, crunching sounds of tech smashing along as this droid moves up. They immediately start moving into the area and they go, you see them getting a little agitated and then one of them raises a gun and the other one kind of moves forward and says, all right, that's far enough. Who the fuck are you? Um, in typical, uh, you're Oniko, you're Oniko, you're Oniko. I walk without skipping a beat. Mm. All right, so make a, this is going to be a social roll. Yeah. Mm. This is not pleasant social. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, oh, crap. Uh, the difficulty is three. I have assets. What's that? Difficulty is three. Okay. The fact that you were shape shifted into Oniko yeah. is a huge asset. Yeah. Uh, one, um, two. Uh, I think you might have something on the back, but I think you I might do. I actually have, just I, be there. I yeah. I also. Oh have right, spin. because you have uh, yeah. So I don't have to roll. Okay. So this is what happens. The guy, you don't answer, and the guy looks agitated when his partner goes, "Holy shit! Open the door." <laughs> and the guy goes, "What? Why? Who the fuck is that?" I don't even make open eye the door, contact. dude. Open the door, and. Uh, he goes, uh, yeah, he goes over and the, as you guys are moving up to the fence, the power goes boom. Go, 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 go. <laughs> How um, quietly can I tear a fence? And you can tear it about as quietly as you can't. <laughs> You're ripping steel <laughs> open. You can out. rip, you can, you can probably make a strength check to tear that thing open. You, there ain't <laughs> no way you're doing that quietly, question. unless. Question, how far oh, away are the guards no, to where to would that. they, like how far? If you're approaching from the road, them? If, if you're approaching from the road, they'll spot you. If you're approaching from the forest, because right. the forest comes up to the perimeter of the fence. Right. Yeah, we're back door by yeah. We're so, back doorboarding it. Um, this, this place is not, the, the outside of the perimeter of this, of this facility is woefully kept. It does not look like they were anticipating anyone trying to get into this place, because mm -hmm. the forest comes right up to the trees. Mm -hmm. So there's no space to see somebody coming from the fences that aren't the road. So if you approach from that angle, yeah. you, are you thinking about using your no, cipher? Is that why you're asking? Oh. <laughs> you guys got ciphers and you can mute Don't sound. Do we see it? Nah, I was thinking about doing a um, sure. like a like a inverse fast ball special where uh, the little dude throws the big dude as opposed to the opposite. Ah, thing. you're gonna try to catapult. Yeah, shot cast I'm up stretchy. There. 
Oh, I thought um, you were going to be a stretchy landing pad, and Cass just chucks people over the fence. And by how people, does I mean Laura want to get in? That, that, um, that'd be good too. Uh, that is the thing. Tear fence over top. Don't tear the fence. Uh, over top. If you can help catch. Hmm. Okay, so I gotta Kay. go first. Yeah. Okay, I'll go first. Okay, I'll I'm, I'm turning it off. Okay, I'm gonna take out these guards. I'll and I'm first. assuming I, I can hold the current. You can. There's no current. You grab the fence and oh, nothing happens. It's shut off. It just got shut off. The fence off. just oh, shut down. Oh, the fence just shut down because they opened running. it through. But they could they could turn it on any minute. Right, yeah, yeah. I'm just gonna hold on to it. Have a Jurassic sure Park moment here. Yeah, yeah. This oh. is, that's the last thing we need. Well, we already had one of those. It's <laughs> so cool. Uh, <laughs> Anton already got us executed once. Let's not have okay. that again. I'll go over really quick, and uh, and then I can be the uh, the trampoline that catches whoever needs to get tossed you over. Better. Thank you. Tell me who's doing what. Okay, I'm just holding on to the fence. Over. Let's take out the guards. Okay. Wait, you gonna take out a guard too? We'll try. We'll worry about it then. Okay. okay. First fence. Wait, wait, your spray right. paint. And I'm gonna try to pass through it. So it takes you. Uh, this is. I believe you have to. Do you have to do a spend? I do. It's an intelligence check. Okay. And your edge already and, covers it. But your edge. My edge does cover it. Yeah. Okay. It's two. You don't require any expenditure of intellect points or anything like that to oh, activate it's the power. Two, then it's one point. Yeah. So then one point. Um, oh, but I do have a, two power shifts in phasing. Oh yeah. Okay. Um, so you spray it, and you guys kind of watch this crazy event as Cobalt takes a deep breath and just takes one step and goes like a ghost, like a specter just passes right through the chain link fence. You didn't feel anything, just. What's the physics? And then your body just re solidifies on the other side. All right, I'm in. That's amazing. Okay, sorry. I'm just going to walk over. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Anton, 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 you kind of watch how comical it is. Anton literally does like this. His leg from a standing position just goes up from the ground straight up to his head and goes, okay. And he just like a cartoon character just. Can you carry Lacey with you? Bends yeah. all the way over. Lacey? Yeah, can you carry Lacey? Like, oh, yeah, this is the answer. I know. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Pretty much. Family. It literally just like yeah. the most exaggerated. I'm gonna lift. I'm gonna lift. I'm gonna lift. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the suit works brilliantly. Now before um, the moment you reach the other side, yeah. you reform perfectly with almost no concentration. Before Cobalt can even head over to any of these guards, I start to stealthily run over. What? Towards the guards, Why? and and as I'm running, my arms and legs are getting longer and longer okay. to just close up that distance. Okay. And the plan is to extend my hand and and hands and arms out, wrap around dudes' faces and heads, okay. so that they go mm, mm, and possibly drop a rifle and then knock them together. That's the plan. Okay. You're not All, the one who's supposed to run off. Um. <laughs> so he takes off. He turns. Um, I take off after him. I'm gonna give you. So you got an initiative on this. Um. I'm gonna give you one chance, Lacey, to try to deactivate those cameras before he gets to those guards. Um, I get to pick between the cameras and the pulse rifles. I'm picking the pulse rifles. Okay. Anton, you idiot. <clears throat> now you can do one at a time if I remember correctly, isn't that right? Uh, yeah, it, okay. that's, that's my limitation. Okay, cool. I'm not a multitasker. Um, this is an initiative roll. Um, oh, but I'm going to give you an asset to the initiative here, because you're... <laughs> <laughs> Long led dude charging out of the darkness. So these guys are literally in the middle of a conversation when they heard the hum of the electrical fence turn off, and they, they literally just go, "Is that holy sh Make a roll. <laughs> okay. So everybody who's going to take an action here, make a roll. I'm holding it for the difficult fence. Difficulty is three. Then don't roll, Bonnie. Frack. And is this a speed? We can't help you. Uh, yes. That's a yeah, speed no check. Difficulty, difficulty is three. I'm specialized in initiative. Okay, so difficulty is going to be. You might be popping in. Two. You're specialized. Yeah. Oh, you're specialized. Yeah. 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 So going to be one. So the difficulty is one. Yeah. You are a fast old bitch. Yep. <laughs> Do you need me to roll as well? Even though not I'm not unless you're the same. not unless you're engaging in combat. I would not know that combat's happening. What's happening? Oh. Was not. Yeah. What's happening in front? <laughs> you know, one has to roll. Did you roll a one? No. Namaste. Not the nat twenty. You rolled a nat twenty. Uh, Damn. Twenty. No, um, oh. Did you did you roll one too? No. Oh. No. So I'm gonna give you a <laughs> major effect. Cool. Oh, yeah. So the the thing is, is attacking two people at once is usually something you have to. 
there's a there's special rules to that, and that's oh, yeah. something you normally can't do. With a nat 20, you get a major effect. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing damage mm -hmm. to one, I'm going to let you do damage to both. Yes. Um, so, and uh, I think, actually, it makes more sense to just restrain these guys. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're going to have you do is... Um, I think the technical term is, I want to knock them the fuck out. Mm. Is the technical. Okay, you're gonna. I'll let you have. I'll tell you what. Together. Yeah. I'm gonna let you stun them both. Yes. Yes. So they're gonna miss their. They're gonna totally miss their next turn. Um. So we gotta get. You run up there. They almost get the holy shit out before your arms wrap around their heads, and you watch in amazement as Anton takes both of these security guards at the same time with outstretched arms, slams them against each other, and they both clatter to the ground, unconscious. For a few moments, dazed, I should say. Those are the only two people out here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, there are the cameras, though. Um, uh, you don't even have to roll that plasma rifle immediately goes. You notice that when they hits the ground, one of these plasma rifles just mysteriously goes, <laughs> turns off. Um, Lacey, you literally just reach out. You hear the whispers of the machine, and you just tell it, and it goes, <laughs> cuts off, goes to sleep. Um, I succeeded in. And, uh, Everyone's got initiative, initiative on this. Yeah, so go ahead. What are you doing? So uh, as this is after this has happened, they're kind of stunned. I'm going to run up and take the plasma rifles. Okay, you take them away. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> two plasma Thank rifles. You. I can't. Then I can't focus on that. <laughs> You're so cool. Did you see that? That was awesome. You hear the groans of these two guards. You say, "Oh, what the hell was that?" Yeah, I'll point them at him. Uh, oh, shit. Yeah, what are you doing? But me? It goes gas. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna tear up a corner of the fence now that she's- <laughs> You're like, well, oh, this is, uh, this is done here. <laughs> you just rip Sound the- is now <laughs> not- So as you rip open the side of this fence, I mean, they're really, there's, there's not enough hit points on the chain link to actually withstand your tear here, uh, Cass. So as you just tear it open, okay. <laughs> Hops just goes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, in the front, um, as yep. you're approaching, um, the guards, they don't say anything to you. They just stand aside, mm -hmm. and one of them just goes, beep, and the door goes, it opens up, and they stand aside, and they don't say a word. Their guns go the to the gates or the front door to the, the front door to the facility. Okay, um, I, I I walk through and I do the thing where you stand and give a really condescending glance. But what I'm really doing is scanning if did they you know did they make it through? Did they set it off the alarm? Is anyone panicking? What's going on? All you detect like, is fear from these two guards inside. Cause it, I, I you don't hear it. Oh, I thought you were staring at the two of the guards. Oh, no, I don't look at them. Oh, okay. Don't um, make eye contact. As you walk inside, sweet baby, or I should say honeybee, yeah. goes in and just stands to its full height once it gets inside. Mm -hmm. And you see this tech corridor filled yeah. with glass walls that uh, open up into office spaces where you see lots of lab equipment that's kind of got sheets thrown over it like the night has come to an end. Mm -hmm. um, and you see a security guard at the end of the hall um, just kind of looking at, looks like he's playing something on his wrist while he's dipping a tea bag into a mug. And <laughs> as he hears Sweet Baby coming, he just, or Sweet Honeybee coming, he just kind of goes, Oh my God. Oh my God. Uh, uh, Miss Oniko, I'm so sorry. I did not know you were going to be here. Um, uh, I don't know where to put this. And he just drops the mug on the ground and says, <laughs> Um, but I'm so, uh, everything is working fine here. Um, is there anything I can do for you? Um, while he's rambling, can I look at the security cameras behind him? Lots mm -hmm. of security cameras. Lots yeah, I, I literally want to scan for movement. Mm -hmm. Like, I know what um, they all are wearing. I know where they around. were about to come in, like, quick scans. At the end of the hallway, you see what looks like the hallway itself opens up into a large social area where you see okay. a couple of vending machines and two people talking. They look like oh, they're in okay. lab coats. Oh, there's not like perimeter security camera? No, it's this? just hallway security. Got it. Okay. Yes. Sweet. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything that I can do for you? I, I, I look at uh, this person and just turn <laughs> and <Yes>. leave. <laughs> um, Honeybee stares at him for a second and you realize for a beat that Honeybee's imitating you and just yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> and, good job. And the guy just kind of just goes, 
<laughs> um, you are walking down the hallway, mm-hmm. and a few of these scientists are look, glancing down, noticing the, the bizarre sight of, a, of what looks like a person in a suit, but the war droid that's following next to the person. And then they, you can see the recognition coming to their face when they realize who you are. And you, you can hear the whispers like, oh my god, that's Oniko. Um, and meanwhile, in the back... <laughs> plan we've ever had. Just go. Okay. Yep. <laughs> We're going. I'm deactivating things as necessary. I actually initiated. So. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess now I have to roll initiative. Um so no no, 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 you're not in combat anymore unless oh, right. you're going to let these guys get up cuz they no. are stunned. They don't have a round. Mhm. But it, once they recover from their stun, we're back into combat. I you assume Castle cast those, so right now, and the guns are had, so I'm focusing on the security cameras right now. Yeah, it casts, I mean, there's really no point. No. They're, those, they're immobile, no. and yeah. Do those plasma rifles clock, have clock. a stun setting? They do not. <laughs> oh, they just have kill? Cool. Yep. Oh, boy. Um, uh, however, in superhero genre, yep. the cipher system, you get to tell me whether or not you kill people. That's true. Somewhat fuzzier on the subject of kneecaps. Brought to you by the subject of kneecaps. Oh, no, the game. Somewhat fuzzier on the subject of kneecaps. Can we just knock them out? Not even those six. Yes. Oh, we good. Oh, that you was brought your bandages. Yeah, great. <laughs> Thank you. I'll um, take this when you get that one. Thank you, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, we roll up and we take one guard each. We're just gonna, I'm okay. still knock watching hops. Not gonna okay. Win. Yeah. I roll up, I take yeah. one camera each. Okay. And then me. <laughs> Camera what one, are you doing? Camera two. Are these like pistol you size or you said rifles? Or are they like they're rifles? So so think of them like they're, they're I would say they're about the uh, the size of uh, like AKs. So they're kind of about this oh. long, about this long. Oh, they're okay. they're assault oh, rifles. Yeah. yeah. And can I tell one is active and one is not? One is definitely not active. Okay. Yeah. The other one actually so these these plasma rifles they fire like machine guns mm. and they they fire like they're actually using. Uh, ballistic ammunition. Okay. But in fact, they are firing highly concentrated plasma bolts. Mm. But it still has the exact same sound and effect. The only difference is, is the barrels heat up a little bit more and okay. the damage is a lot worse. Do we need both of those? We don't, but I don't want to leave them. Cass, give me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Cass, it doesn't take you long. You just kind of fold the one that's been deactivated and Lacey easily deactivates the second. Oh, make a poodle. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, clink, clink. Do you want to hang on to the second one? I, I should uh, okay. meet you inside. Uh, let's go. Oh, do you only bend one? Yeah. 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 You keep the one. other one. Okay. Yeah. That's mine right. now. All right, cool. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So and you guys um, move inside? Or? And these guys are knocked out, right? They are now, yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, they got Cass. introduced Cass. to Cass's knuckles. Okay. Cass and, uh, and the hops. And, and hops's staff. So well, while they move to go inside, well, I'm the door is locked. Well, I'm just going to go right up to the wall. It's secured locked. What kind of lock? It's electronic. Oh. Should I roll? I have to narrate these things, guys. <laughs> Sorry. We have we're, to, we're ready to go. You have really? to know exactly what it is you were effortlessly not needing to rolling walk through. I'm just so, saying. I promise you through. I will Hold not on. effortlessly well, walk through. I beat you to it. I already found out. Hold. All right. But perhaps if I went in from a different location, Stick I could meet together. you in there. Stick together. Okay. Please. Yeah, I'm with Lacey on this one. Okay. Um, we're already... One person elsewhere. Yeah. We're all making sure have, we stay uh, together. Remote on honeybee know. to see what's going on. You have a sense of where honeybee is, and you can certainly link up to honeybee. Okay. But if you do yeah. that, I'm gonna have it you would roll. Be a I'm gonna have you stealth that because that's literally like, if you're gonna make if you're gonna make a collect call to honeybee via like neural link Brady. up, yeah. it's entirely possible that something might get detected. Interesting. Yes, because even though your neural link functions and is a different capacity than like a wireless connection, it is still a it is still a data jack connection that's mm-hmm. that's being connected. It's not a it's not a frequency that can necessarily be understood mm-hmm. or the origin necessarily pinpointed, but it would it would be like detecting a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth signal that has a scrambled code on it. Do you know what I mean? They wouldn't know what the hell it was they were seeing. But it's, but it's possible vicious. they would pick some. Yeah, they would, it's possible they might pick something up. Ah, okay. I'm adding that to my data on Callisto Six. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tell us about this door. Mm-hmm. This door is electronically sealed until Lacey stares at it for a second and blinks twice, and it goes because it it's a difficulty blinks. three door, and there's nothing it can do to stop Lacey. <laughs> so it just goes and it opens up. <laughs> okay. And you guys slip in. After. Um, again. 
the top floor of this building is very small. So when y'all enter this back room area, you see a lot of the lights back here shut off. It looks like these are office areas. You can see down this metal hallway to a large open area at the front where you see vending machines, two people who are standing, staring, facing away from you. And on the other end of the hallway is the unmistakable form of Honeybee stomping down the hallway with a very cold looking woman in a suit walking <laughs> next to him. Um, <laughs> Luma, you, you do everything in your power to resist the temptation of waving wave back, back happily <laughs> at your best friend. Resist the temptation to wave back, resist, resist the temptation to sub, uh, talk okay. to them. Like, oh. So I'm, I'm looking at you and pointing at the two in between us, being like. Y'all, so, so to give you an idea again, Y'all are in darkness. Your side of the hallway is in darkness. Okay. And y'all are y'all are. I would say y'all are about eighty feet away from each other. Uh, uh, if I can make eye contact with you, uh, like about to attack the guards, it, it's sort of a <laughs> pulse rifles. Because I'm walking. I have not stopped walking. No, it's the two I'm scientists. Asking if right? they have. Oh, oh, okay. The no pulse. No, they're, 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 they look like two then scientists. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good. So okay. and they're not. They're staring at me, and I'm just walking. Um, without even yeah. making any eye contact or acknowledgement to them. What is even a scientist? Onika <sighs> doesn't care. Lacey, do you detect any elevators or any way to get to the lower levels? They freaking better have them or I'll flip a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> they do. Okay. In fact, I, I will go ahead and tell you that this facility is completely accessible. Of course, like it was built after, yeah. <laughs> yes, it was, it was built. But where are they? It was built yeah. in an age where they're evil corporations. They're not monsters. <laughs> Where are they? Um, yeah. It, again, this. Yeah. This. Mm -hmm. So the basic, uh, the basic area of y'all are approaching. Mm -hmm. Again, this top floor looks very small. Lots of offices. Yeah. It looks like it's kind of a, a front to a very small. Are there are any signs that say elevators this way? The, in the lobby area that you're walking into, that social area, there are elevators clearly marked. Cool. At the end of the at the end of that room. And that is where I have just been. Bee lining. So when you walk into that room, these two scientists don't say a word. They take steps back, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and they just um, watch you. They're watching me, and they're in the room-ish. So I want to give like stare at them, and give them the like, go back to work. Okay, you point. Point. You point the opposite way. I point in the like the direction you came. I'm not your job. Okay. Um. You stop. When you stop, you they, their breath catches. Yeah. And you stare at them for a second. And it's even though in just those few moments, it's just long enough for this person's skin to develop a bead of sweat. And as you point, um, the gentleman just goes. And Great. goes where you're pointing. The other person just goes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> And the two of them walk in the direction you came into the offices. They they seem to be whispering to each other like, "What?" You, you see a you see a moment of. And then I want to keep walking towards the elevators without acknowledging the shadow where I know that they all are. Okay, um, Honeybee stops immediately and turns and looks at you, Lacey, and says, "Operator Lacey, we have successfully infiltrated the facility." Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Um. Please continue all further communications over wireless only and only in situations of extreme necessity. Confirmed. <laughs> Switching to stealth mode. <laughs> There's a stealth mode. <laughs> Not Is any that out loud? Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank goodness I make them leave the room. Yeah. But, but cameras, so who cares? But also volume, how are we on that? It was loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna start hitting that elevator button. Um, yeah. Tick, 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 tick. Yeah. Lacey, that makes so, it come faster. I'm not breaking Did? character just in case. Okay. Yeah, yeah no, uh, 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 what is it? I want to turn and Sweet. look at at Honeybee with like confusion and anger, just okay. so that it's caught on camera. Okay. How? Uh, how it do doesn't you? react. It stands. In fact, exactly. Um, it begins to move over and stands next to Lacey now. <laughs> Lacey, we need to get you to some kind of computer. And you see the elevator. Ding, <clears throat> ding. It's coming. We need to know what floor we're going on. We need to know if they're. If they're we actually experimenting people, if network. there's people here, okay. we need. Yes. Um, I'll be detectable if I do that. So uh, what cover me. The computer to do that. Let's just. I don't. I don't know. I'm not the boss.
pacifying things. <laughs> oh, that kind. Yep. I want to go in the elevator. Okay, Bro. so you're waiting patiently while this conversation is happening. By the way, um, so Sam, you can try to go stealth mode yeah. with your signal and yeah. try to like, it's just like hacking, but it's an extra action. And out of okay. combat, it really has it, no. Okay. Over here. Good yeah. to know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will add that mm -hmm. to my date on Calista. Yeah, yeah. And it's just like, it's just like, <laughs> Any kind of hacking thing you could do. Can I mask my signal? Probably. Fantastic. Can you make it look like somebody else's yeah. signal? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I would like uh, to uh, hack uh, the planet. Okay. Um, <laughs> you hear uh, Tara just go, like oh, it's been a long time. Hello, I'm the Earth. I mean, getting from there to here. Huh. <laughs> um, God, here we go. Oh, no. Here we go. Nope. No time. That's okay. I don't want to. I hacked the planet. Let's no, go. That's all right. They put really strict rules on singing uh, licensed music on Twitch, so we're gonna not. Anyway. Button, button, oh, really? button, button, What's button, the button, elevator button, music? Button, button. Um, it is oh. always "Girl from Ipanema." It is never <laughs> anywhere in the galaxy <laughs> anything else. Okay. No, it's Smash Mouth. It's Smash Mouth. Uh, all -Star? It's, it's All Star. No. But it's All Star. It's, like it's, it's like it's, the jazzy like. It's the jazzy version. All Star. So as you all filter into this elevator, and, and Honey Honey Baby just squeezes in and. Just, and hunches over, and if you can imagine, all of y'all jammed into this with Anton, like literally stretching up in order to fit in, and, and I'm Oniko like looking partially just, phased. yeah, partially <laughs> phased into the sweet and uh, honey baby, and you all just kind of filter in, and there's a brief pause where you're all facing out towards camera and just, <coughs> and you are all jammed in there listening to this music version of Smash Mouth. I've placed myself in front so that it looks like they're my charges. Okay. Um, so what floor are you going to? So there are 10 floors that are accessible, and everything below that, which goes 10 more floors, requires security clearance. Should we start at the bottom and work our way up? Yep. Can you There's security clearance that Mental stealth? Yes, oh, Is that what you just said? You're going to have to no, pack the elevator if you want. Uh, mental link. Lacey, we're going to need you. What? Oh, OK. Uh, I say yeah, we start okay. at the bottom and work our way up. OK. Um. All right. Whoa. Hi. Brain. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Whoa. Um, what just what? happened? Uh, Are you all right? Yeah. I, I'm i fine. Um, what? Floor... Uh, 20. Negative. I think it only goes down to nine? Mm, no, there's goes, 10 One floors. plus eight, eight sub-levels? There's 10 there's levels and 10, 10 security levels. There is there actually a total of 20 floors. And after level 10, it becomes security only. Okay. Security access. Okay. So... What do you want to? Uh, security access. So, which level do you want to go to? Uh, everyone's right saying bottom. twenty. Okay. They keep the good stuff. So up the, the sub 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 sub. So you're hacking this. Mm hmm The difficulty is going to be seven. Okay. Whoa. Uh, so at base at difficulty seven. The base is going to be twenty one or better before you start jacking that down to whatever you're gonna. Okay. Um, my hacking macro is five. Okay. okay. Uh, so that gets it down to a two. And <laughs> I'll spend a level of effort okay. uh, to get it down to a one. Okay. So once again, Lacey, with their mind pulling what NSA hacker teams can. Yeah, is there like a retinal scan <laughs> that's just like, Oniko, chink, chink? I feel like. Uh, no. There's no retinal scan. like I dream of Genie, and they just go. <laughs> And blink. Or so, so what, what, what'd you roll? Oh, like a scan. Not what'd you like roll? A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah, your yeah. eyeball out. I, I'm, hold on, guys. What was that? 18. 18? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, there actually is a retinal scan in a very small database that has access to level 20. And you immediately bypass it with false information and make the retinal scan a level seven hack. You immediately <laughs> convince this computer that you have full access to this base. And it says, access granted. And you guys begin to descend rapidly. We are so lucky we have Lacey. Everything can be hacked. And everyone. I wouldn't hack a people. All right, you're right. You're right. Uh, I don't say that out loud, but Lou might hear um, it. There is a sort of a sickening sensation in your stomachs as you descend rapidly, as this, this, compu this, this elevator just moves really quick as it goes down 20 floors into the earth. And... And as it reaches the bottom, the doors open up. And as it opens up, you see a ghostly lit corridor about it's the elevator. The moment it opens, it's a ghostly lit corridor that's about, you would probably estimate, about 100 feet wide, almost the size of a warehouse. Um, the ceiling itself is probably about 50 feet up. And you see row after row after row after row of capsules 
that have been frozen on the inside. <gasps> Human-sized capsules. At least a, a safe estimate, a thousand of them. Row after row after row after row. And some of them stack up on these shelves that go to the ceiling in more rows. And there's this cold mist that immediately hits all of you as the door opens. But the alarming part is when the door opens and all this mist is parting in front of you guys, uh, there's one figure standing here in this blue, this dimly lit area. Um, he's got a clipboard. It looks, well, it looks like a clipboard. It's actually more like a, like a data pad. He's a very tall man. Stands probably about seven feet tall. Looks African-American. He's wearing a white coat. And he pauses as the door opens and stares at you all for a moment. Oh, shit. And as the recognition hits Anton, it hits him at the same time. <gasps> and Dr. Jerome Blair says, Anton. This is great. And he smiles. Yep, delivery time. And that's where we have to stop. Smooth, <laughs> 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 yeah, smooth lie. <laughs> Pretty good lie. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a convincing sell on that point. That was so close because <laughs> while, we were plotting Gina, we were, yeah. while Gina was deciding who she was going to turn into, yeah, we, Amy pulls up her notes and she goes, Dr. Blair. She yeah, should be right? Dr. Blair. That was <laughs> I wow, you would have stepped on a mine I had planted. <laughs> Wait, what? Close. That would have been. Y'all would have shown oh, up. We met. Yeah, give it will happen. Find out next week. Really 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 bad. Yeah. I uh, promise I will not step would, on the mine. People um, will be like, Dr. Blair, what are you doing? I thought you were down in the sub levels. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, just uh. Like, uh, so glad like, I went uh, with Oniko. I am. Uh, yeah, Oniko's yeah. going to get the job done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so good. And they can't ask you questions. Add that to the database. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want to piss her off more than I have to. That's true. <laughs> so next week we are going to have uh, we're going to have Oya back. Yay! Um, so Just we time. will uh, we will figure this out, but um, maybe we can get you to help us with the first half. Perhaps? Yeah, if you want, that would I be can good. also send you my character sheet. You yeah, can well, we'll, we'll we'll see what we can pull off here because yeah. that'd be rad. Yeah. Um, yeah, you guys, good game tonight. Um, so lots of discovery. Yeah. You guys infiltrated this base. I'm going to go ahead and reward everyone one experience point. Yay! Yay. I can level up. <laughs> can you? Yeah, I got four now. Oh, do it. Buy something. <laughs> um, buy something nice for yourself. Yeah, Bubble. okay. I'll, I'll spend um, it on one stat. pretty. So yeah. we will see you guys next Friday night at 4 p.m. here on GNS Live. Stay tuned for Fangirling is coming up next. And then after that is... Vampire the Masquerade LA by Nights with Satine Phoenix guesting tonight. Yeah. Oh. Yep. And she's Watch. playing one of my favorite clans, and I'm so jealous. Call it right now. She's playing Nosferatu. Like, she's got to come out full no. scar. I'm not saying anything. I'm not saying anything. No, so now we'll that he said that, I know exactly oh, yeah. what it is. Sam knows. So we'll see you guys next Friday night. Until then, everybody, stay whimsical.